computer science. Give us the welcome address for today's session. Thank you all. In fact, many defects in life, but none of it will be defeated. I am Mr. P. Balendra from Second BSc Computer Science. It's my privilege to welcome you all for second day conference. I welcome our chairman, Shaviria, Dr. Bernard Danapalan, sir, our secretary, Mr. Bernard Prem Kumar, sir, our joint secretary, Dr. P. R. Prem Sen, sir, our beloved principal, ma'am, Dr. C. Inta Lebalenzi, ma'am, and our principal, Mrs. Ja Vice Principal, Mrs. Jafia Solomon. I heartily welcome our honorable chief guest, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Schools of Engineering and Technology, Chris Bangalore. A warm and heartily welcome to our HOD, Ms. Gladys Tangarubri, ma'am, all our staff members. Today, we all are here to attend a conference on a future blend on mathematics and information technology. Today, we are going to gain knowledge about these topics. I welcome you all for this conference. Thank you. It is my privilege to invite today's speaker, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Engineering and Technology, University of Bangalore. As we, are, we well know that we are gathered for a conference on the blend of mathematics and information technology. Now, I invite Mr. R. Vinod of Second BRC Computer Science to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, sir, about their achievements. Good morning, all. I, R. Vinod of Second BRC Computer Science, it's my privilege to welcome our chief guest, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, who is an associate professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Christ, deemed to be University Bangalore. He has completed his ME in Computer Science and Engineering and PhD in Computer Science and Engineering in Satyabama University, Chennai. He has 23 years of teaching experience. He has membership in various platforms. He is a senior member in IEEE. He is a lifetime member in ISTE. He is a global member in Internet Society. And he also a member in Data Science Association and in Python Software Foundation. He handled many subjects like he handled many subjects like advanced cloud computing, cybersecurity, software quality management, data mining, and data warehousing. He had guided more than 16 PhD scholars and published various books chapters. He has patented in IoT-based plant disease detection using support vector machine algorithm, machine language-based EEG signal processing for smart patent monitoring and a system for regulating distributed deep learning in cloud and smart mobile devices. He has copyrights in machine learning, deep learning, cloud networking. He has published more than 18 journals, 14 international journals, and 14 national. He is a reviewer in many journals like Springer's, IEEE, Taylor and Francis Publications publication and IGI Global it has been decorated with many awards like Outstanding Performance Award in Cisco Global, Channel Expert in 3 PhD Doctorial Colloquium, KS and 50 Penny Programs. On behalf, on behalf of Anai Violet College, I would like to welcome you all to that the seminar will completely enlighten you pertaining to the future. All the virtual aspects regarding the topics will be conveyed to you all. You shall exit the seminar with zero doubt as our educators will ensure that they answer all your queries. I kindly welcome Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, an incredible human being and renowned research guy. Thank you. Welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, it's time for our guest speaker, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Engineering and Technology, Christ University. Welcome to you, sir, and over to you, sir.
Uh, Ma'am, shall I uh, scare the screen? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can proceed right. there. All right. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Hope my screen is visible to you all. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, fine. fine. All right, sir. Uh, thank you, dear students, uh, for your uh, nice introduction. Okay. Um, Ma'am, shall I start? Yes, sir. You oh, all right. Fine. Yeah. Everything okay. Clear. Yeah. Uh, good morning to all. And uh, yes, uh, welcome to the day two of National Conference on a future blend of mathematics and information technology. Right. Uh, it is very likely that uh, many of you might have heard about uh, the blockchain and its fundamental appreciation of uh, enormous uh, potential. Uh, if not, uh, then I can tell you that this is a technology that has promised to definitely alter the existing paradigms of information technology. Uh, not only IT, nearly all industries, including uh, finance, government, uh, uh, media, medical, and law. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Ganesh Kumar, and uh, uh, having introduced in the beginning, and I'll move on to my presentation. Uh, this is the floor of my presentation. Uh, probably in the next one hour, I am going to deliberate on uh, introduction to blockchain technology, uh, its uh, technical foundations, uh, uh, the theory behind it, uh, and the various methodologies uh, that have been combined together to build uh, what is known today as uh, blockchain technology. Uh, probably uh, after the part one, uh, uh, having discussed on the theoretical foundations of distributed systems, uh, the history of blockchain, uh, type of uh, blockchain consensus uh, followed by the cap theorem and blockchain. Uh, my discussion also covers a briefing uh, on Bitcoin too. Fine. This is the overview of my uh, presentation. Fine. Uh, coming to the introduction, the growth of blockchain technology. Uh, with the invention of Bitcoin in uh, 2008, uh, a new concept was introduced to the world. Uh, which is now likely to revolutionize uh, the whole society. Uh, some call it uh, blockchain as a revolution, and some trust uh, that it is going to be a more evolutionary. Uh, but the fact is, uh, the revolution has already begun. Many prominent organizations all around the world has already started writing proofs of concept using the blockchain technology. Uh, some organizations are uh, still in the preliminary exploration stage, uh, though they are expected to progress more quickly as the technology matures. Uh, if you look at the last few years, uh, uh, that is uh, in 2013, some ideas started to emerge that suggested usage of blockchain. Uh, around that time, the primary usage of blockchain was uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, and later, many new coins emerged uh, during that time. So here is a graph uh, which shows a broad spectrum of uh, uh, outline, year-wise progression and adaption trend of blockchain technology. Uh, years shown on the x-axis indicate uh, that the range of time in which a specific phase of blockchain technology falls. Uh, um, each phase has a name which represents the action and it is shown in the x-axis uh, starting from uh, the period of uh, uh, the ideas and thoughts uh, to eventually mature and uh, further uh, standardization. And the y-axis uh, uh, shows a level of activity, uh, involvement and adoption of blockchain technology. And this graph clearly displays that ultimately around 2025, blockchain technology is expected to become mature with uh, uh, a very high number of users. And it may be observed the graph from the graph, it also shows that in 2013, ideas and thoughts emerged 
related to other usage of blockchain technology apart from the cryptocurrencies. Uh, then in 2014, the second column, uh, some research and experimentation started, uh, which led to proof of concepts, uh, further research, and full-scale trial products uh, uh, between 15 and 17. In 2018, the industry witnessed the real-world implementations. Uh, uh, already many projects are underway and set to replace the existing systems. Uh, okay. Um, so this graph is uh, uh, based on the progress made on uh, the recent years and the current climate of research, interest, and enthusiasm regarding the technology suggests that by 2025, blockchain technology is expected to uh, become more mature. Uh, after a decade, interest in uh, blockchain technology has augmented uh, significantly. And once uh, dismissed as a simple uh, jeep money from a cryptocurrency point of view, uh, now being researched and by the largest companies and organizations around the world. Uh, in fact, uh, millions of dollars are being spent to adapt and experiment with this technology. And this is clearly evident from the recent actions taken by European Union, where they have announced plans to increase uh, funds for blockchain technology. So blockchain funding and investments uh, uh, in, the, in the phase one, the phase one describes uh, uh, the objective of the phase one is AI and blockchain investment fund and support program, which targets uh, okay, the various uh, logistics in that part. Uh, and the commission uh, is believed to have provided around 100 million euros uh, under the Horizon 2020 program, okay? Uh, the phase two is called Investment Program and Advisory Services under INVEST, European Union 21-27. Here, uh, scale up the investment fund to a fully developed investment platform uh, with the funding estimated to be one to two billion euros. Uh, in addition to that, there are various, uh, various uh, consortiums uh, such as uh, EEA, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, Hyperledger, and R3 have uh, been established uh, for uh, research and development of blockchain technology. And moreover, a large number of uh, startups are also providing uh, blockchain-based solutions uh, in this area. So here is another simple trend. A search on Google reveals that the immense scale of interest uh, in blockchain technology over the last few years. Uh, especially uh, since uh, early 2017, the increase in the search uh, term blockchain is quite significant uh, and uh, the progress has been projected in the graph. Uh, so various benefits of this technology are projected uh, such as uh, decentralized trust, uh, cost savings, uh, transparency and efficiency. However, uh, there are multiple challenges also, such as scalability and privacy, that the area of active research on the blockchain. So, dear uh, graduates uh, and research scholars, uh, so there is a scope for uh, future work can be carried out. Uh, uh, working on the challenges such as scalability and privacy uh, uh, under the blockchain technology. Fine. Moving on to the second topic is uh, distributed systems. Uh, understanding distributed systems is essentially to the understanding of blockchain technology as because uh, blockchain is a distributed system at its core. So the heart of blockchain is a distributed system. Uh, in fact, it is a distributed ledger, ledger which can be centralized or decentralized. The blockchain is originally indented uh, to be and usually a decentralized platform. So in short, it is called as decentralized distributed systems. Okay. Now, what is a distributed system? Distributed systems are the one where a computing paradigm where two or more nodes work with each other in a coordinate fashion with the objective of achieving a common outcome. It is modeled in such a way that uh, um, End users uh, could see it as a single logical platform. Sir. Okay. So, for example, let me uh, explain with an example. Google search engine, we all know that uh, it is based on a large distributed system. Okay. So, Google search engine, 
is based on a large distributed system but as far as user is concerned okay it looks like a single coherent platform okay so the back side of the uh, search engine is a collection of uh, various systems uh, connected intelligently and technically but uh, as a user as far as user is concerned uh, we don't uh, look into the search engine architecture so far as it looks like the right side figure okay so uh, as far as user is concerned it looks like a, a single coherent uh, which means in intelligible and clear platform so this is how the distributed systems work and the fundamental component of this architecture is called node so a node can be defined as an individual player an independent unit okay um, and this nodes uh, are capable of sending and receiving messages uh, uh, between each other right uh, when we say the characteristics of the nodes uh, many are honest uh, there may be few nodes uh, faulty or malicious uh, and they have memory and processor okay in case if a node uh, exhibits irrational behavior as i mentioned no a faulty or malicious uh, then it is called byzantine node so this name is after the byzantine generals problem okay so i have a, a, a brief example on the byzantine generals problem the byzantine generals problem uh, what does it describe okay so it explains about a group of army generals uh, who uh, led different parts of uh, the byzantine army those are planning to attack uh, and sometimes a retreat from the city so the only way to communicating among them uh, through a messenger okay so while communication they uh, discuss all the logistics all the possibilities uh, pros and cons uh, and there should be agreement uh, to strike at the same time in order to win okay the main problem here is uh, one or more generals might have a communication gap uh, because they are located in different parts uh, different geographical areas uh, so due to gap communication gap or technical issues uh, and um, uh, unfortunately there may be one or might be traitors also so who could uh, send a, a miscommunication information or misleading messages or wrong messages uh, so therefore there is a need for a feasible mechanism that uh, allows for agreement among the generals uh, even in the presence of uh, uh, unfaithful or or uh, disobedient the disloyal ones sir so the objective is uh, to complete the mission at appropriately so this problem presented as a practical byzantine fault tolerance algorithm uh, where consensus is reached so in spite of having all the issues uh, there is a common consensus which is reach after a certain number of messages uh, uh, shared between the different parties sir right so okay so this is a small example a small scale example of distributed system which is presented in the slide okay so this distributed system has n1 to n1 to n6 right uh, six nodes um, shown in the diagram okay uh, out of which one the colored n4 is a byzantine node leading to a possible data inconsistency and not only the node there's a, a, a I mean link okay so link is a line connecting between two nodes it's a we can also say a path from a, a graph point of view so this nodes and the link okay so that is broken sometimes it is broken or slow which can lead to partition of the network so this byzantine general problems came out with a solution to solve this issues and Uh, the solution uh, uh, has a challenge that is in a distributed system design the coordination between the nodes the links uh, uh, has become a issue so that is solved with the concept called fault tolerance so this problem has been an active area of distributed systems uh, and it has been a active research area for many years there are several algorithms and mechanisms based on the byzantine general problem have been proposed uh, and they have been implemented at a different uh, arena fine uh, moving on the next is uh, the history of blockchain okay um uh, blockchain was introduced uh, okay with the invention of bitcoin uh, please note blockchain has been introduced uh, after the bitcoin has been in, uh, invented 
in the year 2018. Its practical implementation then occurred in 2009. The one year later, it has been implemented practically. And it is essential to refer a Bitcoin at this juncture because without it, the history of blockchain is not complete. Okay. Uh, you may ask then, uh, was there any uh, uh, pre uh, uh, history on uh, Bitcoin or blockchain? Yes. So the earlier form uh, was called electronic cash. The concept of e cash, electronic cash or digital currency, is not new. Uh, this was already introduced in uh, the year 1980s. E cash protocols have existed. And that was based on a model proposed by an expert called David. So later, this concept has been renewed and again released in the form of Bitcoin. Okay. So just as understanding the concept of distributed systems, how it is necessary to comprehend the blockchain technology, uh, the idea of electronic cash is also essential in order to appreciate the first and the successful application of blockchain. Okay, so not only blockchain, but also Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So as it highlighted, the uh, two fundamental e-cash systems uh, issues uh, have been uh, uh, experienced uh, and they were being addressed. The number first, number one issue was accountability. And the second one is anonymity. So accountability is required to ensure that the cash is spent only once. Uh, isn't it? So when we uh, book a ticket through online or when we do a business, uh, so we'll not be paying uh, again and again. Even in the case of failure of first transaction, uh, we, uh, uh, okay. we confirm that after three or four days, uh, okay, in case our money is uh, debited from the account uh, that is returned. Okay. So we must be ensured that, uh, and we, uh, as a customer, we uh, will not offer to pay uh, several times, uh, which means a uh, double spending uh, is not allowed. Uh, nobody likes it. Uh, so double spend problem or multi times uh, spending uh, will arose when same money can be spent uh, two or more times. Uh, so as it is uh, quite easy to make copies of uh, digital data. This has become a big issue in digital currencies. And the second issue, uh, which is highlighted here, is anonymity. Anonymity is very much required to protect users' privacy. As far as blockchain is concerned, anonymity is the primary future, okay, uh, which protects the user's privacy. So, as with the physical cash, it is almost impossible to track back spending to the individual who actually paid the money, okay? So um, through this blockchain or uh, Bitcoin, okay? So it is almost impossible to trace back the spending money between two or more parties. So, so here I would like to, uh, again, explain a case study. Uh, we might have heard in the news, uh, or read in the newspapers uh, daily. So, um, US pipeline ransomware attacked. Uh, so on this happened on May 7, 2021, um, a company called Colonial uh, Pipeline, the American oil pipeline system that originates uh, in, I believe, Houston, Texas. Uh, so they supply gasoline and jet fuel, mainly in the uh, Southern Eastern uh, United States. Uh, so on that day, uh, May 7, 2021, they suffered a ransom cyber attack that impacted uh, computerized equipment of the company. Uh, so they were all managing the pipeline. So as a result, uh, so it was being blocked. Okay. Uh, so eventually what happened, uh, the Colonial Pipeline Company halted all pipeline operations uh, to contain, okay, so to stop the attack, uh, to stop the mean loss further. Okay. So it was uh, reported to the government and uh, immediately the FBI uh, jumped into the issues, uh, but they were also not able to help the company. And the public started mounting pressure on the company, uh, not only for the fuel, but the same group, uh, 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 I mean, okay, so the cyber attack. So the group was believed to have stolen around 100 GB, gigabytes of customers data from the company server. Okay, so unable to uh, hold that, uh, I mean, pressure mount. 
so uh, finally a colonial pipeline has uh, agreed and paid the amount uh, that was asked by the hacker company so okay so this company has paid is believed to have paid a 75 bitcoin uh, which is approximately 4.4 million dollars uh, within several hours and upon the receipt of the ransom an it tool okay it tool it, a application it may be a software was provided uh, from the hackers uh, uh, to the colonial pipeline company and it's all this uh, uh, developments carried through dark side dark net okay so uh, after the ransom uh, where has been paid uh, colonial pipeline could restore the system so however the tool was a long processing time to help uh, get the system back in time okay so the fbi so we now all know that if something happens to us or agencies they will not be silent okay so they started working on uh, tracing the uh, uh, ransomware company or who had contacted through uh, the dark net so the fbi and various media sources identified the criminal hacking group from dark net dark side or responsible party so the same group is believed to have uh, stolen the customers data okay um finally what happened on june 7th after a month the department of justice that uh, uh, announced it has recovered partially of bitcoins from the ransomware present okay so the point would i would like to tell you is uh, so anonymity okay that which means uh, uh, this blockchain protects the users privacy so it is almost impossible to trace back uh, the money is spent from one person to another person so we don't have the advanced technology to meet uh, even though the department of justice claimed the part of the ransomware has recovered and uh, 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 remaining has been lost okay so that is the concept of anonymity maintained in the blockchain fine okay now moving on um, the next uh, uh, topic is uh, okay blockchain as i said in 20, uh, 2008 uh, uh, it all started with uh, a, a white paper a ground breaking paper uh, entitled bitcoin uh, a peer to peer electronic cash system was published uh, on the topic of peer to peer electronic under a pseudo name called satoshi nakamoto so it I mean the article introduced the term chain of blocks okay so earlier it was electronic cash e cash so there the uh, this is the article first introduced the term chain of blocks in fact no one knows the actual identity of uh, uh, nakamoto yes so after introducing the bitcoin in 2009 he uh, he or she because nobody knew the identity so the person remained active in the bitcoin developer community until 2011 so he then handed over the development to its core uh, uh, developers and the later it is believed he the person has disappeared so since then there has been no communication from nakamoto so whatsoever and his ex- existence and identity are shrouded in mystery but the term chain of blocks evolved over the years into the blockchain the blockchain technology incorporates a multitude of application and that can be implemented in various economic sectors right and kindly note um this uh, <clears throat> the nakamoto's work has attracted uh, 4639 citations okay uh, so uh, the surprising part was it is basically a white paper so a white paper is a report or guide that informs readers concisely about the issue and presents the body's philosophy and the uh, content so it is meant to help readers understand the issue solve the problem and make a decision so unlike your technical paper or journal we know a publication so which has uh, to follow some certain uh, areas like abstract introduction literature survey methodology uh, results discussion 
whereas the white paper just presents a report uh, and it has attracted uh, okay to it's a very surprising that for uh, 4.6k citations being a white paper okay um, now what does a blockchain mean uh, from the layman's definition blockchain is an ever growing secure shared uh, record keeping system system in which each user of the data holds a copy of the record, right? So technically, the blockchain is defined as a peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger that is cryptographically secure, append only, immutable, hard to change. Immutable means extremely hard to change and updatable only through a consensus or agreement among the peers. So this is the exact technical definition of blockchain. Okay, now let us examine each keywords in the definition only, right? Peer-to-peer. -peer. So the first keyword in the technical definition is peer-to-peer, -peer, which means there is no central controller in the network and all participants talk to each other directly. There are no third party involved, right? Next, distributed ledger. It is further revealed that blockchain is a distributed online ledger, which simply means that a ledger is spread across the network among all peers, okay, known accessible in the network. And each peer, each person, a member can hold a copy of the complete ledger. Okay. Next, cryptographically secure. We see that this ledger distributed only ledger is cryptographically secure, which means that cryptography can be used to provide security services. Uh, this makes the ledger secure against tampering and misuses. And the next characteristics is up and only. So it is an another property that we see is uh, blockchain is up and only. This means that uh, your data can be only added to the blockchain Okay, so modification, changing, okay, is not permitted. So this implies that once the data is added to the blockchain, it is impossible to change, modify the data. Okay, you may ask, uh, so then what else uh, uh, the user has the rights? Uh, okay, and uh, again, blockchain offers, uh, that could be the extreme stuff. Uh, it can be changed in the rare, uh, rare scenarios. So wherein the pollution against the blockchain network succeeds. If the 51 percentage of the power is gained, then it is permitted to modify change. So 50 percentage uh, power gaining in the blockchain technology or in platform is impossible, right? And for uh, all the practical purposes, blockchain is indeed immutable, which means it cannot be changed. Right. And next we have updatable via consensus. So the finally, the most critical attribute of blockchain is that it is updatable only through consensus. This is what gives the power of decentralization. Okay. This means no central authority is in the control of updating the ledger to achieve the consensus, but we can make it through consensus. Right. So what does consensus mean? It's an agreement, mutual understanding. To achieve the consensus, so there are various consensus facilitation algorithm, okay, developed and implemented in the blockchain, right? So based on the understanding, that could be, right? Now, blockchain, the network view. So blockchain can be thought of a layer of distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. So better studied in the networks, uh, TCP architecture, OSI, ISO model, and different architectures, uh, right? So uh, it is uh, it can be uh, compared to a layer of a distributed P2P networking, uh, which runs on the top of internet, uh, right? It is uh, similar to SMTP, simple message transfer protocol, or hypertext transfer protocol, or file transfer protocol running on the top of TCP IP architecture. Um, from this network point of view, blockchain's network point of view, so we'll uh, start with from the basement, I mean, at the uh, bottom layer. 
So there is the internet, which provides a basic communication layer of the network. And above, we have a peer-to-peer -peer network that runs on top of the internet, which hosts another layer of blockchain. And this layer contains um, uh, all the details of transactions, blocks, consensus mechanism, state uh, machines, uh, and other various uh, logistics. So all these components are uh, here highlighted as a single logical entity in a, in a box, right? And finally, at the top, there are users of nodes that connect to the blockchain and perform various operations. So from the business standpoint, a blockchain can be defined as a platform where peers can exchange value that is electronic cash transactions without the need of centrally trusted arbitrary. Right? Next, moving on, um, we have generic elements of blockchain. Okay. So um, a simplified diagram has been presented here. So the structure of the generic blockchain can be envisaged with the help of the diagram presented in the slide. So the elements of generic blockchain are highlighted here. And uh, um, the first one, address. Uh, so address, uh, we know that are unique identifiers uh, used in blockchain transaction. So they hold the information about the senders and receivers, recipients. Uh, and next we have transaction, okay, is a fundamental unit of blockchain. And every transaction represents, represents uh, a value from one address to another. Third, we have a block, okay, which is a, a important element of the chain, okay, because the architecture itself called this blockchain, all right? So a block is a composed of a multiple transactions and other elements, such as the previous block hash, a pointer, timestamp, and other informations, technical information. Next, we have peer-to-peer -peer network. As the name implies, a peer-to-peer -peer network is a network topology wherein all peers, peers mean users, can communicate with each other, okay? Um, and they exchange the messages, sending and receiving messages are carried out with the help of the peer-to-peer -peer network. And we have the scripting, the fifth scripting or programming, which is very, very important because scripts, otherwise called as program. They perform various operations on the transaction and they facilitate this fun all the functions. So, okay, so for example, in Bitcoin, transaction scripts are predefined in a language called script. This script consists of a set of commands and they allow nodes to transfer tokens from sender to receiver, from one address to another receiver. The script is a limited language. Please note, script is a limited language. Like a calculator, we have, we have used no, a normal conversion calculator standard and electronic uh, scientific calculators. Uh, calculator supports all program pre-programmed arithmetic operations. Uh, but uh, the Bitcoin script language cannot be like that. Uh, okay. So Bitcoin a script language cannot be called as a Turing complete. Okay. So um, you might have uh, uh, understood or learned or studied, heard about that Turing. Turing complete language means uh, a platform which can perform any computations. So such a computation methodology is called Turing complete language. So as the name indicates, uh, the platform or uh, the methodology is named after Alan Turing who developed the idea of Turing machine and which can run on any algorithm. So irrespective of the complexity, okay? So the script is a predefined language which consists of its own operations, right? And coming to the virtual language, virtual machine, this is the extension of the transaction script. So a virtual machine or VM allows the complete code to run on blockchain that could be used as an extension of the conventional script, right? Next, we have uh, 
CVM, a chain virtual machine. Okay. So CVM is, uh, is developed for and used in enterprise grade blockchain. Okay. So when there are transactions uh, involved uh, in like a chain core, okay, several hundreds and thousands, uh, then the CVM could be very handy, useful. Next, we have state machine. A yeah, blockchain can be viewed as a state transaction mechanism because uh, whereby uh, a state state is a position okay that keep keeping modified uh, that keeps modified from initial form to another form right followed by we have node okay node is nothing but a unit we can also simple word it's a station right so a node in a blockchain network performs various functions, uh, initiate the process uh, and uh, ensures uh, that message receives the destination uh, properly. Okay, so and the node can also propose uh, and validate the transactions uh, with the support of consensus and uh, other security features in the blockchain. Next, we have smart contract. So smart contract are programs, applications, which run on the top of blockchain. Okay. So this smart contract feature is not available in all blockchain platforms. So smart contracts have some kind of activities, properties that supports various use cases. Okay. So for example, trading, finance, record management, uh, insurance and e-governance, etc. Right. Now let us see how does blockchain work. Now we have defined and described the blockchain. Now let us see how a blockchain actually works. Right. So step one. So we have six steps to simplify the working of a blockchain. So sender. Okay. Uh, for example, A wants to connect with B, the receiver. The purpose could be sharing a message. Mainly it is used to, to uh, transact money, right? And the sender initiates the process. Okay. Uh, next, the transaction is represented online as a block. So the two represents, so the pro the work, I mean, uh, the activity has been here described as uh, described as a transaction, okay? And the transaction is represented online as a block, okay? And in the step three, the block is broadcast to every part in the network. For example, if there are uh, 100 nodes connected, the block, which is initiated by the sender A, has been shared. So the block is broadcast to every part, all the peers in the network, right? But it will be destined to only a selective person, right? The peers can view the block, but they cannot process it, accept it, because the sender will have an address to whom the block is indented, right? So those in the network, the appropriate person, the peer approve the transaction as a valid. The block is then added to the chain, which provides, uh, and it is uh, added to the transaction. Okay, so in this way, the money moves from sender A to the receiver B. This is how the blockchain works. Uh. So I have simplified and represented in an easy form. Okay. So in fact, it's a very complex uh, structure. We are ha having a lot of technical aspects uh, involved in the background. Right? Now moving on, uh, the benefits and limitations of blockchain. There are numerous advantages of blockchain technology have been discussed in many industries and also proposed by uh, various experts, thought leaders uh, around the world. So here I would like to highlight a few notable benefits of blockchain technology. The first and the foremost is decentralization, right? So this is the core concept, heart and benefit of blockchain, decentralization. 
which means there is no need for a trusted third party. There is no need for an intermediary to validate the transactions. That's what uh, conventionally happens in our bank. No? If we like to transfer money, we depend upon the bank, log into our uh, bank account, and through bank, our cash and money has been uh, sent. Or if you use any uh, portals like uh, Google Pay or Phone Pay, so they support uh, they support as a third party, whereas blockchain does not have that concept. Uh, there is no need for a trusted third party or uh, intermediary to check, to support, to validate the transactions. Uh, it is, uh, this process uh, is carried directly between the sender and the receiver. Next, uh, transparency and trust. Uh, so because blockchains are shared and everyone can see what is on the blockchain, please note, it is completely transparent. Everybody can see, everyone who appears, all the peers uh, uh, are able to see what is on the blockchain, but they cannot process it. Those having the key only can see. So if uh, I'm sending the money, and uh, Ganesh sends some money to Kumar. Okay, so there may be thousand peers. Everyone can see the only the money. So the identity from where it is initiated is hidden, it is secured. So all the peers could see is the amount, the details of the transaction. So that sender's information or the receiver's information from where it is originated, which bank, everything is hidden, protected. Next, immutability. Once the data has been written in the blockchain, it is extremely difficult to change it back. So mutable means ability to change from one position to another and vice versa. But it is immutable. As I said, I mentioned in the introduction part, more than 51% or the complete block needs to be compromised. That can be compromised when all the peers are actively connected. Otherwise, it is impossible to change it. Right? Highly available, as the system is based on thousands of nodes in a peer-to-peer -peer network, and the data are updated on every node. So even if some nodes leave the network and becomes it accessible, the network continues to work and provides the availability. Okay, which means there's a redundancy applied in the blockchain. Because of this redundancy, there is always a availability of a particular transactions, highly secure. So all the transactions on the blockchain are cryptographically secured. And this security provides offers the integrity to the peers. Okay. Next, simplification of current paradigm. The current blockchain model in many industries, uh, uh, for example, uh, finance, health, uh, okay, so they have they can have their own they can have their own design, architecture, paradigm, working model, and so on. So one model you know, to uh, one, a company you need know, to stick with the same model followed by X or Y or Z. So the simplification is permitted, and it makes it easier to adopt it. Faster dealing, so it's a quick uh, blockchain does not require a lengthy process of verification or reconciliation or clearance because it is the processes between sender and receiver. So it is so faster. And finally, cost saving. Since there is a no trust part, uh, trusted third party, the transaction charges, uh, right? Consultation charges. Uh, or other taxes, okay, uh, and uh, uh, the commissions are all avoided. So our money, okay, without adding a single rupee, it has reached the destination. Okay. So as with the technology, there are some challenges, uh, and they are also addressed in order to make the system more robust. So it is said that no system in the world is perfect. So such ideal systems exist only in the book. Uh, and it is beyond our human's capacity uh, to design or to implement an ideal system, which is 100% perfect. 
every system exists today has uh, pros and cons, merits and demerits, uh, and the blockchain is not exception, right? So the few uh, sensitive blockchain problems have been also highlighted: scalability, adaptability, regulation, and relatively immature technology and privacy. So we'll discuss in the later stage. Right? Uh, moving on, um, the tires of blockchain technology. So in this slide, um, various layers of blockchain technology are presented. Uh, due to the advent of blockchain technology, it is expected that many applications uh, will evolve from the fundamental concepts of blockchain. And there are already some has uh, 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 developed, uh, I just realized, uh, and in future, we may witness expect uh, more advancements in current uh, blockchain technology. Okay, so here uh, we have uh, picked uh, four tires: uh, blockchain 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and uh, X.0. So 1.0 blockchain was uh, introduced with the invention of Bitcoin, and it's primarily used for cryptocurrencies, uh, which is a very basic level. And this generation started in the beginning, I mean, 2009 and ended a year later, I mean, 2010. Followed by uh, 2.0, the second edition of blockchain generator used by financial services and smart contracts. So this generation started when ideas related to blockchain for other purposes, okay, in the late 2010. 3.0, the third generation of blockchain is used to implement applications beyond the financial services. And this generation of blockchain emerged around 2012 with the support of multi uh, uh, applications okay, in different industries were researched. And the last um, believed to be the last tire, X.0. This generation represents a vision of blockchain singularity, where one day there'll be a public blockchain service available that anybody can use, like a Google search engine. So which will provide all the services needs and meet the expectations of the society, right? Next, moving on to the futures of blockchain. A yeah, blockchain um, uh, performs, uh, or we can say implements various functions uh, with the support of the technical aspects. Uh, the main features uh, are uh, highlighted with the four points, uh, distributed consensus. Uh, as a distributed and uh, uh, decentralized, uh, is the primary foundation of blockchain, right? And any transactions posted from a node on the blockchain are verified based on the logic, I mean the set of rules. So only valid transactions are permitted to share or pass to in the technology. Next, um, pla platform for smart contracts. So a blockchain is a platform on which uh, programs can run to execute business logic on behalf of the users. Right? Uh, not all blockchains have the mechanism to execute smart contracts. Uh, however, there is a very desirable feature which is available on the latest uh, blockchain platforms. Uh, for example, uh, Ethereum and Multichain have the concept of uh, supporting a smart contracts platform, right? And when we say about the smart contract, uh, so it is as it, it is a recent form, latest form. Uh, and the main feature of the smart contract is uh, it, they're automated, which means they are developed with autonomous programs, uh, which are part of the blockchain network. Uh, and they are intended to support all kinds of business. Uh, okay. Next, moving on, um, the fourth topic is types of blockchain. Based on the way that blockchain has evolved over the last few years, uh, it can be divided into several categories. So, so here uh, we'll examine the different uh, eight category types of uh, blockchain. Okay, uh, distributed ledgers, uh, DLT, public and private blockchains, shared ledgers, uh, fully private and proprietary blockchains, tokenized and tokenless 
blockchain. Uh, first, I need to clarify an ambiguity. It should be noted that the distributed ledger is a broad term describing the shared databases. In fact, the concept of distributed ledger started from the electronic cash building. Uh, it was one of the building block of the blockchain. Okay, so although all blockchains are fundamentally distributed in nature, all and all distributed ledgers are not necessarily a blockchain. Distributed ledger technology. It should be also noted that over the last few years, this DLT have grown to a commonly used to describe the blockchain in finance industry, especially. Actually, this DLT uh, does not have a cryptocurrency or they do not require mining to secure it. Right? The third kind of public blockchain, as the name suggests, these public chains are allowed, are not allowed by unauthorized people, are not allowed by everyone. Okay, so um, which means they are open to the public and anyone can participate as a node in the decision making process. Okay, so public chains are meant for a common usage. For example, Bitcoin and Ethereum are both considered as a public blockchain. Private, which is a, a, a opposite form of the public one. As the name implies, uh, private blockchains, uh, they are just private, uh, which means they are open only to a consortium or the approved authorized group of individuals in an organization. Okay, so for example, Hydra Chain and Quorum are examples of uh, private blockchain kind. Uh, and their primary purpose is to provide a, a blockchain platform that supports both the blockchains in public mode as well as the private mode. Next, we have the shared ledger. Uh, this is a generic term that is used to describe any application. So when we say application, that includes the database also. Okay, so which have been uh, used and shared by a public or a consortium. Okay, uh, in general, in general, uh, all blockchains fall into the category of a shared ledger. Okay, so distributed and uh, a shared ledgers, uh, online ledgers, uh, right? Uh, next, we have fully private and proprietary blockchains. Uh, an example of uh, this type of blockchain might be um, to allow for collaboration and sharing between the various government departments. It is a privatized and property by, uh, owned by certain organizations, but at the same time, at the same time, it also allows for collaboration, open for collaboration, and they permit uh, to access the data, share the data between various government departments. Uh, based on some mutual agreement uh, or understandings, uh, right? So even in private blockchains, uh, tokens are not really required, but they can be used as a means for transferring value or representing some real world entity. Next, we tokenized blockchain. These blockchains are standard blockchains uh, that generates cryptocurrency uh, as a result of uh, um, a consensus agreement, understanding through mining and initial distributions. Okay. Um, Bitcoins and Ethereum are the prime examples of uh, this kind. Next, we have tokenless. There are few blockchains uh, designed in such a way that they do not have the basic unit of transfer value. Okay. So without that future, it has been designed. Okay. And it this tokenless blockchain does not have its benefits because uh, they don't have any uh, support of transferring the value. It is just it's a concept. Uh, okay, if uh, uh, any party piece are interested, they can initiate it. Uh, but this kind of uh, blockchains, uh, they don't have any benefit when it comes to the other logistics. Uh, 
okay so um, security and uh, other updates are not guaranteed in such tokenless blockchain so, right uh, this ends our uh, uh, discussion of the various types of blockchain now we'll move on to the next session that is different types of consensus okay so what does consensus mean so consensus in simple word can be said to be a agreement or a compromising this is a backbone of a blockchain and as a result the blockchain provides a decentralized control thought of process okay and this concept is implemented with the help of algorithm they are called consensus algorithms and they are also governed by the blockchain unit so it is a process of agreement between distrusting nodes in the final state of data so that should be a consensus achieved so to achieve this the different algorithms are used consensus specialized algorithms so right uh so this mechanism that supports uh, is a sequence of steps uh, taken by most of or all the nodes in the blockchain these are the requirements uh, to meet the consensus uh, right as i said it's a consensus part is the backbone of a blockchain this provides a decentralization of control through the process known as mining so these requirements must be met for any kinds of consensus agreement okay so agreement is done between the harness nodes decide on the same value so termination so once it is started then there must be end so all harness nodes that made the execution of consensus process and eventually reach a decision that is agreed validity depends upon the value so all harness nodes must be the same as the initial value proposed by at least one harness node fault tolerant this very much required in the event of any issues failure or other disturbances so the system should continue to run okay so blockchain should run even in the presence of faulty or malicious nodes as i mentioned in the beginning byzantine nodes and finally it integrity this is a very important requirement that no node can make a decision more than once in a single consensus that's a democratic approach applied throughout the platform we have two types of consensus mechanisms number one uh, bft based traditional byzantine fault tolerance and leader election based consensus mechanism right and the consensus in mechanism uh, is that roughly the two categories are uh, proof based uh, bft based uh, and with the support of the various features uh, i said there are so many concepts that support the consensus part uh, pw four stands for proof of work uh, proof of stake uh, then we have distributed uh, okay proof of service poet a proof of elapsed time proof of deposit pod and poi proof of importance we have uh, pbft i mean uh, mechanisms that supports including packs wrapped and etc proof of activity proof of capacity and Uh, POST stands for proof of storage. So all these concepts are uh, have been part of uh, consensus mechanisms, uh, and it is not required to implement all these uh, characteristics uh, because based on the need and the requirement, uh, uh, two or more properties, characteristics, or these things entities may be implemented. Okay. Now moving on, the cap theorem and the blockchain. and another important part of a uh, blockchain is a cap theorem uh, which was known as the brewer's theorem introduced by eric brewer okay and uh, the theory states that any distributed system cannot have please note any distributed systems cannot have consistency availability and partition tolerance simultaneously so consistency availability and partitioning tolerance constitute the cap theorem okay so a blockchain should not have 
all the three characteristics simultaneously. If it is that, then it cannot be uh, supported in the blockchain. So the complete architecture, okay, is without one or two of the characteristics. And it has been proved that the distributed system cannot have consistency, availability, and partition tolerance simultaneously. Okay. So without the absence, uh, in the absence of one or two, then the chain can be permitted. If all the three are agreed and supported, then it cannot be said to be a distributed, centralized, because blockchain is a decentralized and distributed system. If these characteristics, consistency, availability, and partitioning are implemented, supported, then the core, the heart of a blockchain would not exist, not possible, right? Um, Again, uh, quickly, I'll move on to uh, the concept of Bitcoin due to lack of time. And I'll just brief on, uh, because Bitcoin is a very important part of uh, this blockchain. So here I, I, I like to address uh, six points uh, in brief. Uh, okay, there are many myths and misinformation exists around Bitcoin. And uh, indeed, all cryptocurrencies, uh, okay. And Bitcoins are, there are around since uh, 2008 concept uh, been uh, uh, floated through Nahamoto's work. Uh, and it has changed the mode of transaction in business uh, to some extent, we should agree that, right? Uh, the use of Bitcoin by major companies are almost upon. Uh, there were big, there are Bitcoin ATMs in the Western countries and US uh, already to be found. And traders such as Amazon and Microsoft have also embraced uh, the Bitcoin ATMs. Uh, and it is going to be uh, become a part of our lives in future. Right? Now, what is Bitcoin? Uh, the definition of Bitcoin is a stately uh, uh, forward. It is a global currency accepted in most parts of the world that exists only online. So this currency exists only in online and the actual inventor of Bitcoin is not really known, but Based on the records available currently, Satoshi Nakamoto created the crypto, this currency. It's a pseudonym. It may also represent a single person or a group of inventors, but there is no guarantee in that, right? And all the transactions would be recorded on public ledger, which every user could see and every user could monitor. All the peers are able to follow it up the informations, but the identity of sender and receiver are protected. So Bitcoin is considered to be the father of digital currencies, right? Now, how does it differ from the conventional currencies? Firstly, uh, the fiat currency, the conventional currency has a physical form, right? For example, we have you know, 500 rupee note, a few coins, 5 rupee, 10 rupee coins, which is in our pocket and we can exchange it for goods like a, a cup of coffee or a chocolate. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, completely altogether different. Uh, so they get a complex code in which it is stored in the form of ledger, they are traded and Ma'am, is it lost in between?
Ma'am, am I continue? Shall I continue? Is it lost in between? Hello. Yes, sir. Shall I continue? Yes, sir. For a few minutes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, Thank sir. You. Okay. So there is no middleman involved uh, in uh, the Bitcoin transaction. So no third party has the access. Uh, not mean that uh, no middleman. There's no access provided to the third party. So it's a different kind of privacy. Yes, sir. Uh, So this means every use of Bitcoin is a record. The records are held on parts of blockchain technology, which are entered and registered in the name of public ledgers. And a global currency, yes. Most of us, in, for example, most of us wish to travel during holidays, either somewhere here local or to another country, in case of a foreign ex place. First, we need to convert our own currency into the designated country uh, which we are visiting. So we have to decide in the form which we will take it, uh, probably a small amount of cash uh, which is permitted in the country. Because in the case of the theft or lost, uh, there should be always a supporting person. So uh, what we also know that, that the form of a direct fee, an additional charge in our card, if you are using a card, up to, of course, uh, a transaction charge has been also detected on every exchange. Whereas Bitcoin avoids all these problems, uh, right? So once we have our Bitcoins, uh, they can be used uh, in any form of exchanges. Uh, there are a few countries, Ecuador and Iceland, they have banned uh, the utilization use of uh, Bitcoins. Uh, whereas countries like uh, Russia, China uh, have also permitted so mostly Bitcoin is welcomed across the world, except a few, right? And it's not a Bitcoin just the same as using online banking. So certainly there has been a substantial move from banks globally to remove the cash from the currency flow. Nowadays, um, it is surprising to see that under 10% of the world's money exists in the cash form. Rest are all digital. Okay. And uh, what can I use uh, Bitcoin for? So early days, the use of Bitcoin were limited, means very few merchants prepared to accept data. But times have changed now. Now tens and millions of transactions are being carried out uh, in the form of cryptocurrencies. So, so for investment opportunity and legitimized currency, we can use the Bitcoin, right? And finding a discount also offered here in store purchasing. So there are many uh, online forums which offer ready and uh, usually reliable. There are few experts advice uh, where we can spend our Bitcoins also, right? So on top of this, there are specialist websites, consultants uh, such as coindesk.com will uh, also offer some good assistant, helpful. Now, what are the characteristics of Bitcoin? Okay, so these are the important characteristics highlighted. First is scarce. Yes, please note Bitcoin is limited to 21 million coins or 21 million units. It cannot be generated above that. So clearly there is a scare. That's why there is a huge demand and more value. Durability, yes. Bitcoin is purely digital and cannot physically degrade. Recognizable? Yes. Portable? Yes. It is just a question of popping the Bitcoin onto a removal drive or app using the code. Right? Divisible? Yes. We can't go lower than the lowest denomination of uh, our conventional rupee. If you have 10 rupees, which is meant for only that. Uh, but Bitcoin can be further divided. Divided. Recognizable. Storage. Uh, and it is difficult to counterfeit also, right? Widespread use, yes. Fungibility, yes. So a Bitcoin is a Bitcoin, is also a Bitcoin. Whereas a dollar is not a pound, a dollar is not a yen, 
dollars for a ruble all bitcoins are equal and no bitcoin is more equal than any other right so these characteristics are considered to be a great form of bitcoin so okay next most uh, who controls the bitcoin in order to work properly it must be capable to peer to peer operations so right and coming to the pros and cons uh, as based on the discussions it is uh, clearly understood uh, we can have the pros and cons of bitcoin so transparency yes privacy low cost uh, speed and security for shellers so please remember it is the only transaction that appears on the blockchain we can uh, visualize the movement of uh, the transaction from one place to another and as i said the identity is been protected hidden right secure yes okay so it cannot be used as a source of identity theft so the transparency provided by the uh, by the blockchain means the merchants cannot apply any tricks or gimmicks so high returns on investment that could be will um, understood if you go through the business transactions so myth and understand there are still people out there who regard bitcoin as a currency of crime and terrorism we cannot um, neglect that it has been as said any technology has its own pros and cons pitfalls drawbacks demerits will be there but unfortunately it has been when it uh, reaches in the hands of uh, a crime and terrorism that cannot be avoided so there are risks everywhere right volatility lack of protection for the buyer uncertainty so these are considered to be the cons uh, lack of protection uncertainty and of course uh, there are a number of uh, cryptocurrencies have emerged uh, competition so uh, all currencies are not same so currencies of course different and the principle remains so today the major cryptocurrency we cannot assure that it will not be superseded in the future by one form to another form and has the bitcoin peaked this is a question i would like to put in front of the audience surely the rise in value of currency cannot be sustained logically there there has been a point Point, uh, at which its value go no higher I mean it cannot go beyond its peak uh, as it is limited to 21 million the financial world is a very competitive marketplace and uh, if bitcoin continues to be successful surely other many players larger players will seek to take on its attributes uh, so again this is all super supposition uh, but as we saw earlier because it is such a new currency we cannot predict with any confidence where it might go either peak or other falls okay uh, this is a different types of currencies exist i have listed the top okay in fact the list is inconclusive bitcoin is considered to be the first cryptocurrency created and there are also other individual cryptocurrencies known as an alt coins alternative coins it is difficult to say which crypto those are the best one but based on their market value someone can have the uh, number one position or two or three and so on fine okay so you can also have the look uh, as um, as on today the trend of the value of the bitcoin i mean cryptocurrencies so except a serial number 7 cardano has a, a fall in its value whereas uh, all the major currencies have been raising have given uh, a good returns uh, to the investors uh, right right uh, so with this uh, my uh, i i would like to sum up my uh, discussion so uh, so we have discussed some basic concepts of distributed systems and uh, we have also reviewed the history of blockchain we discussed concepts uh, such as electronic cash uh, and further i have also deliberated on definitions of blockchain from different point of view okay we also have explored the different types uh, and examined the benefits and limitations of this new technology right and also a, a briefing on bitcoin has been also 
and carried out that. Okay, so these are the references I have uh, uh, read, covered, and noted from various points of this presentation. Imran Bashir, uh, Isaac, uh, and few textbooks, a uh, few uh, articles uh, and websites uh, have been very helpful uh, for the preparation of this presentation. So thank you all for your kind patience uh, the past um, nearly one and a half hours. Uh, okay, and on this occasion, I would like to thank the management of uh, uh, NIY um, Arts and Science College. And I also uh, um, uh, thank uh, HOD the Department of Computer Science and especially uh, ma'am who has been uh, supporting in this uh, national conference. So thank you all. Any queries, uh, you can please, uh, doubts and clarifications can be reached. I have also shared my mail ID here. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your valuable information about blockchain computing. Hope you all got a very useful and clear ideas about this topic. Now, we are going to start the presentation. Students who are going to present the papers, be ready. Ms. Vishali and Ms. Glory Vijaya Street from Women's Steam College is going to present a paper on an automated remuneration. So next, Ms. Darchini, be ready for the next paper presentation. Okay, ma'am, can I start my presentation? Yes. Okay, is my screen visible to everyone? Is my voice audible? Yes, we can share your paper. Yes, uh, everyone, I'm Jeev Shali from the Department of Computer Science and Technology, WCC, here to present my uh, paper, which is uh, e-remco and uh, automated remuneration calculator. Ma'am? Okay, this uh, paper is titled e remcom because it's all about uh, the software which is assisted uh, the user in calculating remuneration amount by using feature-driven uh, development model. It is an uh, agile model which is used uh, with the main process of uh, Actually, sorry for features. The yes, ma'am. You can just give slideshow. This is view. No, just view. Press F5 or you can do. Ma'am, my screen is already in slideshow, ma'am. Full screen is in Ma'am, my PPT is already in slideshow, ma'am. You can continue, you can continue. Okay, ma'am. So, this uh, paper is basically on feature-driven development, which is a software uh, development like methodology in Agile. Its main purpose is on uh, given the timely update with uh, user interaction and working the software in this uh, method. So the main objective of this uh, method in the paper is to develop a uh, software using the development model and to implement with the uh, active user interaction, uh, ACA active client interaction uh, through this uh, model. The main uh, thing here implemented is uh, to do the requirements of the users 
in the given time with respect to the model generated to generate the automatic remuneration result. The methodology uh, which I have used is uh, it comes under agile model, which is a uh, wide wide software development. Uh, it's a conceptual uh, framework for computer uh, computer software engineering, which begins from uh, starting phase, planning phase, uh, follows and uh, till deployment phase. Each agile method uh, comes with different uh, combination of phases. Here it has a uh, file, different types of agile methods, which are uh, test driven, uh, feature driven, uh, extreme programming, uh, scrum method, dynamic system development, such that. Uh, so the model I have chosen is a uh, feature driven development in agile development. development method. The main idea about uh, FDD is to manage the software development requirement feature list, uh, which is uh, the user requirement uh, list uh, collected from the user uh, for the need of uh, developing this uh, software. So this uh, method has five uh, sequential phases, which are, uh, which are developing overall uh, model preparing the features, planning the feature, model integration, and uh, model integration pieces. So this, this is the FDD life cycle, which uh, is used in this model. So these are this an FDD, uh, development, uh, develop an overall model uh, is to develop the uh, model, which will be uh, parted in the module pieces. And then, then uh, building a feature list is, uh, which comes under uh, gathering user requirements and uh, developing the uh, features list. And planning the feature, planning the feature basically helps in uh, how features will be uh, placed in the modules. And module integration is, uh, is basically like uh, detailing the designs of uh, functional requirements in the project. Then integration model with each feature is uh, basically orientating in the uh, feature implementation in uh, design specified in the uh, thesis. So the next one is uh, basically my uh, paper is on FDD with ACA. ACA means active uh, client interaction. So why this method is used here is to is used to give an uh, response towards uh, changing requirements. Um, however, the benefits uh, are more in FDD. It has some uh, lacking to lacks in some areas. So, like uh, less uh, availability to the changes in uh, changing requirements, uh, lack of documentation, such as. So, in this uh, paper, I, ha I have dealt with the limitation which is less uh, able for miscommunication. To overcome this, I have used uh, active client interaction as you have seen in the uh, life cycle. So here the conclusion is uh, in this uh, paper, I have shown the agile model, which is uh, feature driven development with active client interaction uh, this method is used to eliminate one of the drawback of uh, FDD uh, which is miscommunication uh, why I have chosen this drawback is to is to eliminate this uh, because uh, miscommunication or lack of interaction will lead to more changes in the projects that's why I have chosen this uh, so in discussion of conclusion uh, the software has been developed using uh, FDD, uh, which is uh, to prioritize the features in implementation process. Uh, uh, that is the main reason I have chosen this uh, method uh, in my uh, project, uh, as my project is uh, ba most basically uh, done with uh, features given by the users. So the software has been developed with the help of a ACI. 
method to avoid the communication uh, communication mishap. So the software uh, is built and tested with the agile model and it is executed. And uh, I have uh, go through more than 10 people in this uh, software app, uh, and paper. And these are the top six papers uh, which more related to this uh, agile method. So thank you for this opportunity and your attention. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, is it not audible for us? Are you uh, continuing? No, ma'am. I just finished now. Okay. okay. Sir, uh, Ganesh, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am following it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, Vishali, you can uh, share the screen. Uh, you share? No, you can close it. Sir will be questioning you. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Stop sharing the screen. Yes, ma'am. I have stopped sharing my screen. Next one, Darshani, be ready with the, over there. Ganesh, sir, you are going to question uh, yes. then and there. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, uh, Harini, uh, what could, uh, how can we continue the work? What are your plans in future enhancements? Can you just brief it? Uh? Harini, uh, Thank you, you me? Yes, sir. Okay. Ma'am, that participant, yeah, oh, oh it was Vaisali, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, um, yes, sir. In what way you can continue the work? So I have done this uh, software with uh, FTD uh, along with AC, uh, Active Client Interaction. Uh, which okay. is uh, a draw, which uh, I have uh, referred with uh, more papers, it has given us a drawback. So to overcome, to eliminate the drawback, I have used the uh, active client interaction. So I have come across many drawbacks, like a lack of documentation to make the software more, uh, more effective in uh, working. So I want to I want to say is uh, we can uh, work in that uh, drawback to make the software more uh, effective in its working. Uh, fine, Vaishali. Okay. Can you have the next presenter, please? Yeah, next presenter is uh, Darshini. Yes, I'll share my screen now. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Ma'am, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is visible. You, you may please proceed. Uh. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Darshni from WC Women's Christian College. My topic is prediction of movie success with sentiment analysis of tweets using machine learning algorithms. So the entertainment industry is one of the largest in terms of cost, earnings, and the number of workers employed. So the larger industries are more complex, making it difficult to decide how to invest. And as the industry is growing far too quickly, which has resulted in a great amount of data being made public, making it an intriguing area for data analysis. So it would be a potent tool to utilize a computer that could predict a movie's performance even before it is released. And as the use of uh, social networking sites has rapidly increased, uh, and these websites are the most com most convenient means uh, by which people can share their views and opinions in the forms of uh, 
tweets or blogs or status or whatever it is. Uh, so a significant amount of sentiment rich data is being produced. So this study performs sentiment analysis to classify tweets as positive, negative, or neutral, which is used in predicting movie success. And along with that data, other data like movies, metadata, and um, like the number of actors, uh, Twitter followers, or the number of likes on a movie trailer are also taken into account. So to, to determine which ma machine learning algorithm produces the best accuracy, uh, those ac algorithms are implemented and uh, the results are compared with each other. So the objective of the study is to predict the movie's performance prior to its release using the metadata that is available before the release of the movie and to perform the sentiment analysis using naive based algorithm and to analyze and compare various machine learning algorithms in predicting movie success. Methodology. Firstly, the sentiment analysis. So as the social networking sites are becoming more suitable app for people to share their views or opinions, uh, the sentiment analysis focuses on locating and classifying those opinions or feelings uh, expressed in source text. So this study is uh, uh, performing sentiment analysis you, using naive ways. Uh, why naive ways is because uh, it is shown that naive ways works better than most algorithms uh, as it is easy and fast, that is simple and powerful. It also performs well in multi-class predictions. Uh, and um, when assumption of independence holds, uh, naive ways performs better than other, other models like logistic regression and so on. And it uses Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem is nothing but it helps us to compute a conditional probability of occurrence of two events based on the probability of occurrence of each individual events. And the naivest is also used successfully in other applications like spam filtering, text classification, and so on. So the objective of sentiment analysis is to examine a public sentiment in a way that it will support corporate growth, that is a, a financial profit or a growth. It uses NLP techniques. NLP is natural language processing techniques. It has automatic rule-based and hybrid. Uh, rule-based is nothing but the human-driven uh, type, that is it relies on linguistic rules and automatic is when it uses machine learning algorithms and uh, hybrid is when it uses both of it combined. Natural language processing is an AI technique uh, that enables uh, machines to understand the human speech in a text or voice. Uh, so there are also some challenges faced by sentiment analysis, that is when the tweets have emojis on them or when a sarcastic a sarcasm is used in a tune in a tweet even the neutral statements are very difficult to classify now the prediction now by using the data collected from sentiment analysis the, and other data like the number uh, the actors popularity or the likes on the trailer and even considering the classical data like uh, the basic data of the movie, the cast of the movie, or director of the movie, all those things along, we do the prediction. That is, the films are classified into five classes based on their levels of profitability that will go uh, from blockbuster or hit and moderate, below average or flop over one, uh, five classes. And some of the machine learning algorithms that that can be used are uh, KNN, SVM, naive that we already saw, and uh, on some classification. KNN is a lazy learner algorithm. Uh, it, it saves the training later rather than learning from it immediately. And SVM is uh, it establishes a best line or a boundary that divides the uh, n-dimensional space into classes. And then there's ensemble classifiers. Ensemble is a it's multiple classifiers. It improves the uh, accuracy, the performance of the model. Ensemble classifiers has random forest bagging and boosting. Random forest is an ensemble of decision trees. And then there's bagging. Bagging is used to handle bias variance data. That is, it lowers the variance of the prediction model, which leads to the better performance of the model. And then there's boosting, which sequen sequentially trains the model, increasing the overall accuracy and it can cut down on errors. And to do this project, I uh, did a literature review on uh, 
several previous papers. Uh, I made a comparative study on those papers, uh, which helped me to uh, a compute a gist of the project that I'm gonna do. These are the papers that I refer. And uh, this study shows the importance of creating a way to predict the movie success uh, using social media data. And uh, from the literature, from the papers that I've studied, according to the published works, uh, an actor's popularity is, com is um, considered as the most crucial factor in a film's box office performance. Uh, that is, uh, um, it doesn't matter if the tweets are, if the sentimental analysis data is negative, the actor's popularity will be the most crucial factor. And um, it has shown that the SVM outperforms other classification algorithms in terms of performance. Future works can include deep learning algorithms that can be compared with SVM. And data can also be taken from IMBD, which is a, which is a credible measure of uh, movie's performance. And then other features like, for example, an estimate of a number of audiences in a particular year can be made using the number of tickets sold in that year. And um, additionally, factors like a uh, country's political situation or uh, economic stability that have an impact on the audience. For example, less people will uh, view movies in theaters during tough economic times. So the eventual success of a movie depends on these factors. Uh, so it is recommended to take these factors into account for upcoming initiatives. Um, these are my reference papers for the study that I made now. And that's it. Thank you. Um, mom? Darshini, you can yes, stop sharing I'm... once you completed your presentation, okay? Okay, ma'am. Next one. Next to Punita. Next to Punita from... Women's Christine College is going to present on finding website detection. Am I saying visible, ma'am? Am I audible? Ah, yes, yes, it is visible. Uh, you may uh, slightly increase the audio, uh, two or three points. Yeah, you were audible, but okay. ah, fine. Okay. Uh, please uh, go ahead. Myself, Punita, from Women's Christian College, Department of Computer Science and Technology. Uh, I'm here to present my topic, phishing website detection. So basically, phishing is a type of crime, uh, cyber crime, where the users are attacked, uh, contacted via email, phone call, text message uh, by using the link. So users, uh, we users don't know which link is the original and which is the duplicate. So by using these links, uh, the people, they try to, call, uh, clear, clear, uh, they try to obtain our information like passwords, banking information, and our personal information. So we like, uh, and we just click the link and we just uh, uh, the users they try try to information and they are and they also get our monies uh, phishing is a form of social engineering where the attackers they, they receive the sensitive information and my research paper helps to find the which algorithm will be which, which learning algorithm will be uh, better for choosing detecting the phishing attacks and uh, the domain which i choose is for machine learning and machine learning the algorithm uh, well, works well and gives a better result uh, of phishing attacks. And the main objective is to predict whether the link is a phishing or legitimate uh, using the machine learning algorithms and to build the 
appropriate model and uh, build and evaluate the model. Then the literature review I have done for the five papers and out of which the random forest gives the best accuracy. Then the data set have been taken from the Kaggle and it contains more than 11,000 data sets. Uh, and it contains of 32 features, including target future. And the data set, uh, it, I mean, uh, categorized into four features, that is address bar features, abnormal based features, HTML and JavaScript based features, domain based features. Uh, these are the features, uh, data which comes in the address per future and it represents the IP address mainly. Uh, then the abnormal based features are based on the URL. Uh, then the HTML based features and the domain based features. And this is the visualization of the data set and uh, the data set almost contains of the zero to one uh, ranges. Then uh, this is the target column, which is contained a one represents the phishing and the minus one represents the legitimate websites. Uh, then I have implemented my uh, research and I have gotten the accuracy and in lot of which the random forest gives the best accuracy. Uh, and uh, in future, like in the deep learning algorithms can be implemented uh, and it gives a better result. And, Thank you for, uh, these are the, some of the references uh, which I have referred. And thank you for giving this opportunity. Um, Punita, can you please go, uh, go scroll to your results? Sir? You have compared with uh, several algorithms, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have listed so many algorithms here. Yeah, I think last but one, previous, yeah. Methodology previous. Previous slide, please. So various ML algorithms. Sir. Yes, sir. So uh, how much um, uh, how much amount of data set you have considered for the purpose of your work? Uh, for, uh, training yes. as well as the testing. So eighty percent yes. of the data. Okay, fine. So have you done with any uh, come with your own uh, methodology? Because you have listed so many machine learning algorithms, you know. Can and, you repeat it, sir? Uh, have you come with your any novel novel algorithm or method? Uh, you have done good literature survey, fine. Um, yes. Have you arrived any conclusion? So what first you can do later to uh, achieve more like, results? What can be done? To further? achieve more results, uh, in like to prevent from the phishing attacks, we can implement in the user interface. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, my last question to you is, uh, you have referred few journals and articles, right? So yes, um, have the, uh, in those papers, uh, 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 the authors who have presented the uh, results and uh, testing, have they also got the same kind of uh, uh, accuracy as you, finally you conclude that random forest has achieved the maximum accuracy. For example, yes. 97.7. Was yes. it the same result has been projected or uh, uh, done in a literature survey? No, sir. Like uh, this is a different data set, and uh, that literature review they are having different data sets. So, so you mean to say the accuracy differs from data set to data set? Am yes, I right? Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. okay. With the which uh, the Fine. data set which I have taken, I have said that uh, I have got this. Uh, Okay. All right, fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Punita. Ms. Sinduja from Women's Christian College is going to present a paper on building recipe recommendation. And next, Mr. Ram G be ready for the next paper presentation. Ma'am, is my screen visible, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am, it is fine. So all you need to select the uh, 
full screen mode be selected yes sir. so i am sidhu right. from women's christian college my topic is building recipe recommendation system so so basically food is essential for all the human survival and uh, people always try to taste uh, different types of uh, recipes so currently there are uh, many website for cooking recipes which uh, gives us new innovative dishes and uh, in this paper i have used uh, recommender systems which takes the information from the user's profile and it compares the information to present uh, all the relevant uh, dishes so this is the domain study here machine learning algorithms uh, help to segment the customers uh, based on their user data and uh, all the behavioral patterns like uh, their uh, browsing history purchase details etc um, so the ma main aim is to develop a recommendation engine to present the user with a list of items based on their uh, preferences and uh, this is the literature review and these papers are uh, similar to my research so the recommendation systems are the systems that are designed to recommend things to the user based on their preferences it actually deals with a, a large volume of information present and it uh, also filters uh, the necessary information uh, based on the user's preferences and it also computes the similarities between the users and the items so the methodology i have used here is collaborative filtering uh, and user based collaborative filtering item based collaborative filtering um, under user uh, under collaborative filtering um, it uses algorithms to filter data from uh, user reviews and all the user ratings so item based collaborative filtering approach also uh, recommends uh, based on how the similar recipes uh, how how the recipe uh, recipes are similar so it also uses the tani moto coefficient and uh, log likelihood uh, similarity to compute uh, the similarities between the items and the users so next one is user based collaborative filtering uh, it is a technique uh, uh, which is used to predict the items and it also uh, checks the users Uh, based on their preferences so this is the formulation that is uh, used under user based uh, core under user based uh, recommendation we have pearson's correlation and uh, euclidean distance this is the data set i have taken uh, from the all recipe website it contains 46000 recipes and 19 lakh uh, user reviews and uh, these are the features of the data set i have also processed uh, pre processed the data set and scraped to obtain of about 940 users so these are the experiments and results uh, for item based uh, approach uh, it makes use of preferences given by the users and it also used the uh, two similarity techniques like uh, tani moto coefficient and log likelihood similarity um these are the results with training data and testing data uh, lowering the by lowering the values we can indicate that uh, more accurate uh, recommendations uh, will be for the data set so i conclude that uh, user based collaborative filtering uh, produce more results produce more accurate results based on the user preferences that's also um as in the chat sir good work done from you thank you sir okay fine so at um, future scope considered... uh yes sir at future scope it will be possible to enhance the food recommendations by using the collaborative filtering our hybrid approach uh where the data metadata will be uh, where we can extract more metadata sir okay fine uh, you started with the statement food is very essential that's uh, yes, good sir. okay fine um 
have you considered any uh, no uh, all this your work are based on internet uh, studies and data yes sir i have uh, okay. also referred you, uh, research papers uh, uh, research papers have you referred any um, also um, visited any satellite channels uh, for there are very many popular uh, uh, shows are there no broadcast in several televisions uh. yes sir Have uh, you considered any data from the popular, for example, TLC is a very popular no, channel. Yes, right? sir. Uh, uh, but I referred all the research papers and the uh, internet stuff. Okay. So, um, no, just uh, my question is, uh, um, for example, yeah, um, the food will be may may not be popular or demand all the times. So, uh, so it changes from uh, time to time, season to season. During festivals, uh, some food may be in high demand. Uh, can we come across such issues? Sir? Yes, sir. It actually uh, uh, predicts and gives the uh, food uh, based on user preferences and user ratings. Uh, okay. We cannot have all the repeated and similar foods. Sir. That's why. Right. Okay. So, uh, so what is your conclusion? So, so which food will be more hygiene, and what is your recommendation to the? Uh, audience uh, from your work uh, it's actually based on user preferences uh, and i can i conclude that uh, user based collaborative filtering uh, gives more accuracy uh, okay. rather than uh, item based so uh, all right fine is there any in that hygiene part is also involved in your work uh, no sir i have not included any hygiene no okay have compared fine. with uh, user based approach and item based approach sir all right okay so that's all from my side um, any queries from the audience please any queries sir yes yeah you can stop sharing it ma yes ma'am is it any sir any queries for this presentation uh, yes sir that's all from my side ma'am we can move on to the next presentation thank you mr job m namji of second msc in computer science from anne college arts and science college is going to present the paper on the sir is my voice is audible sir yes sir you are audible Please go ahead. Okay, sir. Myself from the I am pursuing second year MSc Computer Science from Annapolis Arts and Science College. Uh, now I am going to explain about my research paper that how human consciousness is. Sir, is my voice is clear or not, sir? Ah, uh, you are audible. Please go. Ahead. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, my research paper is about how human consciousness or how human memories can transfer or converted into digital codes so that i titled digital immortality <laughs> these are my overviews about my research paper from abstract to reference i have mentioned uh, many informations before going before going into it we will see a small introduction about my research paper human consciousness is as simple as input and output of electric signals within a network of processing units therefore comparable to a computer reality is much more complicated the goal of is to present and discuss about transferring the data from human brain as digital codes converted from neuron signals with the help of neurotechnology human memory storage is one of the greatest marvel of nature the human brain consists of about 1 billion neurons each neurons form about 1000 connections or other neurons 
the concept of uploading an entire human brain like thoughts feelings memories and running it on a computer is called whole brain emulations these are the anatomy of human memory storage and these five parts are working bef- behind the memory storage in human brains some type of memories can roughly classify memories on the basis of their time duration with the experience in our brain as well as the classification is also based on the ability of the brain to recall them they are sensory memory short term memory short term and working memory long term memory episodic memory and procedural memory i referred some theoretical survey from my former research paper let's see a small glance about it mm. mit runs a course on emergent science of connectomics the work to create a comprehensive map of the connection in a human brain and the next anders sandberg from the future of humanity institute at oxford university who in 2008 wrote a paper titled home brain emulation a road map describes this project as a stepping stone towards being able to fully able to emulate the human brain and the last point is very important thing uh, the dimitri itskov's project named as 2045 initiative he is a russian entrepreneur media mogul and billionaire also a scientist he plans to live forever and he plans to take all of us along for the ages he predicts he will complete the final milestone in digitizing human consciousness in this paper the project aim is to collect and store human memories and use it for future use right now there are scientists around the world working on technology that could one day take your brain and possibly your consciousness and upload it onto a computer this would be a game changer in neuroscience and some believe could lead to immortality there are projects all over the world sorry shall i continue sir yes ma yes ma you continue okay thank you there are projects all over the world working on scanning and simulating brains in the name of healthcare and medicine this is more about unlocking mysteries of our brain and less about unlocking the key to immortality now i am going to conclude my topic mind uploading is a very long term project of humanity the desire is there to scan and map an entire human brain the process may lay the groundwork for a brave volunteer to have their brain scanned and digitized which might lead to the first immortal being with the technology that we have right now we are nowhere close if this process is applicable with the nano neurotechnology we would be able to scan the memories from the human brain and storing it from the brain itself this is the key of immortality thank you these are the reference about my research papers thank you sir uh, okay um, ram it was a very uh, brief uh, uh, presentation from you good um, i was expecting uh, some kind of references from cognitive science or cognitive theory um, okay sir but it is missed uh, uh, do you have any uh, understanding on cognitive information sorry sir because you, you speak about cognitive science or cognitive theory uh in this uh, in this type of technology in this generation of technology some scientists are uh, fearing uh, like uh, how how can i explain about this so simply sir if uh, this project is is present suppose if this project is present in this generation many people were okay. misused so that uh, they hiding uh, the scientists were keeping very top secret confidentiality so that uh, i have reference from many books and uh, news channels so that i have mentioned okay. this okay sir. okay is there any intellectual activity involved in your work have you come across the term intellectual activity uh, intellectual activity not like that sir but for uh, example i can say uh, the thought process uh, or reasoning ability or uh, remembering recollecting such things sir uh, sir for example in 2018 or 19 uh, in there some russian scientists are uh, scanned the brain of a monkey like chimp- i think chimpanzee it is they scanned okay. the monkey's brain and implemented it to a okay. lego robot uh, uh, while uh, while checking the result the lego robot is playing the chess without any human help without any human consciousness okay so that they are started the digital immortality process 
Okay, so now my uh, final question to you is: so Why it is called a digital? Uh, digital. What is the I mean uh, significance of the term digital in your work? Because have, I have, have you been converting converting the thought process into uh, data and yes, fed sir. into any computers and processing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the transformation okay. of human consciousness into the digital codes that can be stored easily in any computer system or database, sir. So that I have mentioned digital immortality. Okay. 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 Because uh, we think, you know, uh, humans think a lot. Uh, every yes, moment sir. we think parallelly. So you should have a very big uh, high-end machine, sir, needed needed to store all such data. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Do we do we have uh, such facility? I mean, uh, hardware infrastructure. Uh, literally, human brains, uh, comparing to computer storage, human brains storage level is 2.5 petabytes. They mentioned some exactly. scientists have mentioned 2.5 petabytes. Correct. Correct. Uh, on that storage level, we don't have. That's why I mentioned. Uh, uh, right, right now, there are scientists around the world working on technology. They will take. Uh, after 2045 or 50, sir. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Fine, Ram. Um, good. Good explanation from your side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ramji. Ms. Priya, Ms. Nithya Sri, and Ms. Sandhya of the BSCS from going to. Paper on organ on a chip. So next, Mr. P. Balindra and R. Vinod Kumar, be ready for the next paper presentation. Pleasant afternoon to everyone. I am Priya from the BSC and I am a passion from college. My topic is organ on a chip. These are the contents of the organ on a chip. I include the production production and so many. At the of organ on a chip, organ on a chip is a complex three-dimensional model of living, breathing human organ. Yeah, there are some disturbances from your up. side. Please check. Sir, I am audible. Ah, yeah, fine. Please go ahead. Continue with your the, presentation. The device is made. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The device is made using human lung and blood vessels cells. It can predict absorption of airborne nano particles and mimic the filamentary of response to cut by microbial patterns. This is the organ on a chip. Introduction about the uh, organ on a chip. Drug testing in animal models in this time consuming, costly, and often does not predict the absorbed effects on the human. And lost 60 percentage of animal models are not able to predict the toxicity. 3D culture models have recently granted great attention. The promote levels of cell differentiation is not possible in conventional 2D culture systems. 3D cultures are systems in a larger microfabrications technologies from the microchip industries and microfluids. There are so many types of organ on a chip type. Lung on a chip, heart on a chip, bone on a chip, kidney on a chip, and then liver on a chip, gut on a chip. Then, now what is organ on a chip? 
It is a 3D microflow at cell cultures, chips that stimulates the activities, mechanisms, and psychological response of entire organs and systems. It consists of subject of matter, significance, biomedical engineering research, more precisely in bio-MEMS. One day they will perhaps abolish the need for animals in drug development and toxin testing. The human on a chip. Applications of organ on a chip provide an accurate alternative of traditional animals, tests that are often fail to predict human response. Test the effectiveness of new drug candidates for safety and efficiency in human tissues. Then test the safety of cosmetics, health scientists, including how tissues respond to new drug candidates, ensure better regulatory decision making, develop persons and drug to counter bioterrorism threats. Then lung on a chip. It's complex three-dimensional model of living, breathing human lung on a microchip. Size of a small computer chip, the device was developed by a team of very Institute of Biological Arts, SAS, and blood vessels that surrounded them across a coarse, flexible boundaries. Oxygen passes through a thin membrane of cells to the bloodstream. This membrane consists of an inner layer of lung cells, a permeable matrix in the middle, capillary blood vessel cells on the outside. These are the lung's functions. The failure to predict a human drug toxicity. 50% of drug candidates are failed in a A clinical price due to toxicity, specious difference in that test. The development of safe and effective drug is currently hampered by the poor predictive power of insisting. Preclinically animals that often lead to failure of a drug components and late development factors they enter into the human clinically trials. The conclusions of the organ on a chip. Asthma is a common lung disease characterized by wheeze and shortens of a breath. It affects 5.1 million people in the UK and costs the UK economy approximately. 2.5 billion per year. A new and more effective threat is a th treatment to reduce the burden of asthma. Previously, animal models were used to identify the test and new drugs. However, especially in asthma, these models failed to produce a new treatment. The aim of this study is to develop the laboratory-based model of the human lung. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, can you please scroll up uh, to the uh, previous slides. Can you please keep on scrolling the previous okay. slides? Previous one. Keep on scrolling. Uh, please stop here. Next, next. Next. Because uh, the slide number is not there. No, I could not find. Uh, next, okay. please. Next. Next. Um, you had mentioned no, uh, organs on different chips. Uh, next, uh, please. Ah, yeah, yeah. Organ on a chip types: lung, heart, bone, kidney, liver, and gut. So, uh, all um, you are knowing about Internet of Things (IoT) now through Priya's presentation, it is a chip on everything. <laughs> uh, fine. Um, so, my basic question is: uh, Is the chip uh, uh, the same? on different organs, uh, or every organ has its own independent individual chip. What does the chip do? Because lungs, uh, this lungs have a different chip, and hearts has, uh, have a different chip. Did you get my point, Priya? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. So it is gen generally mentioned as lung on a chip. Part on a chip, yes. bone, kidney. So are all, all these that? chips are same? Are all these chips the same or different? Sir, different, sir. Different. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, what is their main basic function? What does the uh, this chip do? It works on a like a human organ, sir. If uh -huh. uh, if lung is failure, when human lung is failure, the Okay. We will uh, insert the chip. It works like a lung. Okay. No, uh, are there any articles or work has been carried out uh, a successful implementation of chip in, chip in a particular uh, human organ? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because uh, recently I uh, came to know that when the scientists tried uh, my, uh, planting chips on uh, 
a brain so it didn't it didn't work okay the experiment was not successful no um, no what is your understanding and outcome of your uh, this work a peer can be uh, can you please scroll down to the references and the paper or the articles you had uh, okay down to read peer references so science daily youtube ieee explore pharmaceutical journals so so are there any specific uh, journals publications uh, you have done it for the the uh, work no sir no okay fine priya thank you okay sir so thank you sir ma'am please invite the next presenter yeah of the university computer science from anwarat arts and science college is going to present a paper on unlocking auto machine learning So next, Ms. Parini, Ms. Padma Sri, be ready for the next paper presentation. A very good afternoon to all. I am P. Balendra, second B.Sc. Computer Science from Annivale Construction College. Now I am going to present my paper, Unlocking the Potential of. Now I am going to present the my paper presentation on <laughs> Unlocking the Potential of Automation Learning. We are going to see these following topics. Abstract the introduction to automated machine learning. Can you finish machine learning? Limitations of automation learning. Conclusion. Future of automation learning. Abstract. Automation learning, also known as automated machine learning, is an emerging field that aims emerging field that aims to simplify the process of building machine learning models. Introduction to introduction to automation learning. automation learning is a process of applying machine learning automation learning can be used for variety of function clustering tasks of group a set of objects and anomaly detection identifying data that don't fit normal patterns benefits of automation learning Automation learning offers several advantages over traditional machine learning opportunities. Automate automatically the process of model section and hyperparameter learning. By using automation learning, we can save more time and resources. Applications of automation learning. Automation learning can be used in a variety of applications. It can also be optimized search algorithms, recommended products, and detect. Frauds. Now, remaining topics will be explained. My, let's see the limitations of auto mobile learning. Auto mobile learning is some limitation. It can be difficult to explain the result of automated model, as the models are often complex, that means often difficult to understand. Additionally, automation learning can be computationally expensive, as it requires significant amount of data 
and compute resource like computer, communication devices, computer system, computer network, and hardware and softwares. Automation learning also has difficulty dealing with certain types of data such as unstructured data. Typical large collection of file, they aren't stored in structured database format. Unstructured data as an internal structure, but it's not predefined through data models. It may be human generated or machine generated in a textual or non-textual format or data with missing values. Additionally, automation learning is still a relatively new field on their lack of standardization in process of developing, promoting, and possible mandating standard based on compatible technologies and best practice to experience automation learning. Future of automation learning. The future of automation learning is bright as the technologies continues to develop gradually. New solutions for the challenging tasks will be developed, such as improved method of interpreting results and better ways to dealing with unstructured data and automation learning will become more accessible, allowing more people to take advantages on its benefit. As new algorithm and technologies are developed, automation learning will become more powerful. This will improve automation learning to generate efficient and accurate model. It is also help us to solve complex data problems. In future, automation learning will become an essential tool for machine learning engineering, data scientists, and many more fields. Conclusion. While there have already been some use case of automation learning in the healthcare field, more works need to be done in order from there to be widespread adoption of automation learning in healthcare. At the end, towards the aim of making AI more available to the general public development in automation learning comes to a huge stride in the right direction. With a recent rise, it's seen as research interest. Automation learning can revolutionize the way machine learning is practiced. Thank you. Um, thank you both, uh, Balendra and team. You have done a crisp of AutoML. Uh, I have one question to Balendra and uh, uh, the second presenter. Uh, Balendra, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, at what level of AutoML is used in the industry? So from your work, uh, you might have referred, I mean, uh, I read so many uh, uh, textbooks or visited websites, you know. At what level? of uh, AutoML is currently used in the industry. Because AutoML is meant for industry. Because industry are the one, they have been working on real-time problems, uh, isn't it? Uh, so from your work, uh, so, uh, at what level of AutoML has been applied in industry? Most companies implementing AutoML, sir, because they use this uh, AutoML machine learning for uh, to uh save their time and resources sir so that they can do okay. the work easily sir they can finish it okay. easily all right good good fine um my question to your friend is okay sir uh, is there okay ah uh, yes sir uh, uh, can you list uh, any uh, few auto ml framework uh, examples of auto ml framework uh, very popular sir? widely used examples of auto ml framework uh, sir Am I hearing, sir? Auto ML framework. For example, machine learning algorithms. Uh, we can have the list, no? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, like machine that. learning Auto models. ML yes. Yeah. Auto ML framework. Can you please uh, list a few construction examples? Construction, parameterization uh. of uh, MO models. Uh, have you heard about Auto Keras? Auto Keras. Keras, uh, uh, okay, Auto Keras and uh, Google Cloud Auto ML. Few are examples of uh, uh, framework. Specialized. Uh, uh, okay. ML box. Yes, Mission exactly. Box. Yes, a teapot. Uh, uh, correct. Robot. Auto, Auto, robot. Auto Keras is getting very popular among the research scholars. Uh, 
auto keras and google cloud auto ml that's another tool framework uh, supports auto ml fine good thank you sir fine <laughs> Ma'am, uh, please you may invite the next presenter. Thank you, Mr. Balindra and Mr. R. Harini and Ms. Padma Sri of First BSc Computer Science from Arts and Science College is going to present a paper on future trends clouding computing. I'm Padma Sri from Anne Wallet Osman Science College. Now, now I are going to present PPT on the topic future trend in cloud computing and challenges. First, I will show the uh, syntax. First, abstract future trend in cloud computing, private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, futures of the cloud computing conclusion and reference. First, on the introduction of cloud computing technology. In a cloud computing environment, in a cloud computing environment, data center, sorry, Cloud technology is the lifeline of the latest technologically progress and a new generation trendsetter in the modern tech industry. During the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, companies worldwide began applying the work from home model to their global workforce and implementing various digital technologies in their business. And the next topic, the fu uh, future trend in cloud computing. First, in the list is multi-cloud. Multi-cloud is the use of cloud service from more than one cloud window. It can be as simple as using software as a service from different cloud vendors. And the second one, advantage, advanced security. Cloud security will become intelligent, automated, and reliable. It will be driven by advances in AI machine learning and quantum computing. And next one, edge computer over data center. Edge data centers are smaller decentralized facilities that provide compute and storage in a location closer to where data is being generated and used as compared to regional and cloud data centers. These facilities enable new applications by re reducing latency and optimizing bandwidth. Next one is IoT, Internet of Things. An IoT platform is a cloud enabling platform. And IoT is the cloud access me med mediator. It is used for the development and development of application. It collects data with a remote device configuration. It also sends over real time alerts to troubleshoot. And expansion of data storage capacities. Cloud storage will be faster. Data centers, centers will have a larger storage capacity. Cloud providers will implement data security framework. And next one, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence with cloud service with cloud service gets business the most out of both service. Investing in AI requires technical skill, computing power, and a massive capital. However, via cloud solution, AI technology is implemented without a huge investment. Serverless computing. Serverless architecture allow com companions to develop and run application without having to manage the physical service. Cloud service provide will do all the scaling, maintenance, and upgrading. Your application will still run on their service, but AWS does all the server management. Last one, container and uh, Kubernetes. 
Containers are the faster path to better cloud computing application. It enables applications to increase developer velocity. Containers being a greater level of consistency regardless of the infrastructure. It makes Kubernetes a standard for running containerized applications at scale. Container-based cloud-native apps by Kubernetes offer attributes that build stacks of modern IT infrastructure. And private cloud. There are three types. One is private cloud. Private cloud is a type of computing that delivers similar advantages to public cloud. Next one, public cloud. In the public cloud, the same storage is being used by multi-users at the same time. And hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is a mixed computing environment where applications are used in a combination of computing, storage, and service in different environment. Helps maintain tighter controls over sensitive data and process. There are 10 types of futures of cloud computing. First one, resource pooling. Second one, on-demand self-service, easy maintenance, capability and a rapid elastic, elastic, el elasticity, economically measured and reporting service, security, automation, re uh, resiliency and availability, large network access. Conclusion. Cloud computing offers alternative to IT departments for improved flexibility and lower cost. Cloud computing profits in market demands by improving resource utilization and providing tremendous benefits to customer of all size. It promises increased reliability and accepting it due to some application security issues which may hamper the cloud in the long run. As per the ongoing research and development activities, cloud computing holds the potential to stand out at the top, but with a few challenges to come alongside, which is which it should take care of its future growth. Thank you. And the reference? There. Thank you, sir. But mostly it's fine. Um, yeah, you have covered briefly on the public, private, hybrid and all. Um, as you mentioned, one of the biggest challenge in cloud computing is uh, security. Okay. Uh, security means uh, um, the data information of the client or the users needs to be protected. Okay. In case of loss, data is lost. So what kind of remedial uh, 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 activity can be initiated from the cloud. Uh, you said it is secured. Uh, fine. In the event of loss uh, of any data. Yeah. Um, uh, can, can you elaborate on this, Badma Shri? Sorry, sir. Yeah, in the event of loss of data in the cloud, so what could be the remedial action? Data Did you get my question? The, yes, sir, yes. Ah, data yeah. remediation is the process of cleansing, organizing, and migrating data. There is a okay. misconception that data remediation simply means deleting business data that is no longer needed. Ah, okay. Mm, fine. Thank you, sir. So, you? okay. Yeah, fine. Infusion of nanotechnology in computer hardware. So next, Mr. Shakti Bailan, be ready for the next paper presentation. Okay. Hello. My screen is visible now.
Uh, Mani, your screen is visible. Yes, sir. One second. Yeah, your um, PPT says thank you. Hope that you have yeah. not ended the presentation. Yeah, fine. Yeah, you can start, Mani Hanna. Okay, sir. Hello, everyone. Myself, Mani Hanna. I am here to present my project called Infusion of Nanotechnology in Computer Science Hardware. Is my title is visible, sir? Uh, yeah. Okay. These are the topics I'm going to cover. Right. This project is to reduce the production of silicon semiconductor chips in the upcoming electronic gadgets and produce variable semiconductor chips with the help of nanoparticles. Well, we are completely centralized by the electronic gadgets like mobile phones, laptops, smartphones, TV, and any screening devices and other electronic appliances also. These gadgets were made of circuit boards, semiconductor chips, and dedicated IC, which is integrated circuit. So the circuit board semiconductor chip and the IC were made of sil silicon wafers. These silicon wafers is the material of choice in industry integrated IC industry. Semiconductor called ingot. These ingot were sliced into Thin wafers. Usually, silicon is produced as a liquid or flexible plastics, according to the survey. And silicon can take anywhere. Oh, one second, sir. The screen is visible now. Is my screen is visible now, sir? Uh, we could not see. It says you had started. Uh, yeah, fine. Got it. Uh, yes, Mani, uh, you can uh, go ahead. Continue with your presentation. So the introduction slide is projected now, right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Semiconductor means, yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Semiconductor means connective properties can be increased by mixing with materials like borons or phosphorus. Silicon is uh, made of sand. Yes, it is the second most abundant element after oxygen. A type of sand called silica sand, which is made of silicon dioxide. This sand is melted and cast in a large cylinder called ingot. These ingot were sliced into thin wafers. Usually, silicon is produced as or flexible. According to a survey, an average silicon can take anywhere from 3 to 8 years down. So, silicon is hazardous to our environment. Now move on to the existing system disadvantage. Silicon semiconductor emits heat during the usage of gadgets. For example, take a mobile, consider I'm playing a game or streaming a high quality video. During this heavy usage, the silicon board might get heat, 
which is closely sealed with the lithium ion if the board emits heat the battery life cycle of battery will easily reduced in some cases these are the bad from 2010 to 2020 tons and tons of evs generated increased by roughly 60% of this growth no sign of show, slowing down Uh, so is there uh, currently in facing some technical can is it vis visible sir uh yeah yes okay by 2000 tons and tons of evs generation increasedly rough 60 percentage and the growth of road source no sign of slowing down by 2030 itself the annual evs production reach up to 75 million metric tons we move on to the proposed system advantages using highly conductive nano materials can make carbon is not visible right sir sorry sir sorry for this inconvenience facing serious network issue So network issue, he will come, sir. Yes, sir. We have still, sir. We have still more fifteen presentations, sir. Sir, okay, we can come, sir. After five minutes, we will continue, sir.
Uh, excuse me, sir. Shall I continue now? Uh, yes, please. You can. Money content. You can continue. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Thank so you. Have you checked your network? Uh, is it fine now? Yeah, sir. It's fine. It's totally All right. Now. Okay. Okay. Can I sh start from the beginning, sir? please yeah this is my project title called inclusion of nanotechnology in computer hardware these are the topics i am going to cover 
abstract introduction existing system disadvantage proposed system advantage the presentations conclusion and the reference paper let's move on to the abstract this project is to reduce the production of silicon semiconductor chip in the upcoming electronic device and produce biodegradable semiconductor chips with the help of nanoparticles let's move on to the introduction in this modern world we are completely centralized by the electronic gadgets like mobile phones laptops smartphones tv and smart watches screening devices and other electronic appliances these gadgets were made of circuit boards semiconductor chip and a dedicated ic which is integrated circuit so the circuit board semiconductor chip and the ic were made of thin silicon wafers silicon is made of choice in the integrated circuit industry semiconductor means conductive property can make increase by mixing of materials like boron or phosphorus silicon is made of sand yes it is the second most abundant element on the earth after oxygen a type of sand called silica sand which is made of silicon dioxide the sand is melted and cast in large cylinder called ingot these ingot were sliced into thin wafers usually silicon is produced in liquid or flexible plastics according to the survey a silicon can take anywhere from 50 to 500 years to break down so silicon is hazardous in environment silicon semiconductor uh, these are the existing system disadvantage um semicon uh, semiconductors emit excessive heat during usage of the gadget for example let me take a phone um consider i'm playing a game or streaming a high quality video during this heavy usage the semicon silicon board might get heat which is closely sealed with the lithium battery if the board gets heat and the battery also getting heat the same scenario happen in for some several days the life cycle of battery will be reduced in short period the, in some cases the battery may get explode also this issue is officially proven in the battery experts after the calibration of lithium battery from 2010 to 2020 tons and tons of e waste generation increased by roughly 60% and this growth show sign no sign of slowing down by 20 2030 the annual e waste production reach up to 75 million metric tons now we move on to the proposed system advantage using highly conductive nano materials we can make carbon nanotubes using nano technology it is possible to build circuits precisely at atomic level by using nano particles we can fabricate nano transistor which allows integration of more transistor per space and it will enhance the chip per- performance also preferring these nano particles may result in greater power processing and advancement of means of memory storage the ability to condense vast amount of data in a clearly packed comp- compartment called nand dot this may eventually re- replace the hard disk storage nanoparticles plays a major role in advancement of technology which is cost effective for production of large scale in fact a fact says that a small amount of nanometer particle remained after the temperature topped up to 950 degrees celsius the majority of elements couldn't resist even through the eight times eight times larger than this size these are the pictorial pictorial representation of some silicon uh, how silicon affect environment and the bonding of nanoparticles uh finally the conclusion the, my main object is to contain pollution free environment from e waste and hazardous radiation my project is to make an alternate elements for silicon by producing biodegradable semiconductor chip for eco free environment and greater enhancement for the upcoming innovations these are the books and journals and site i refer i'm th- very much thankful for this opportunity thanks for having me and sorry for the 
inconvenience sir and i am specially mention mrs gladys tangarupi head head of the department computer science especially for pg thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity ma'am i'm done sir uh, okay yeah good uh, money I, i have a question um, what are the mechanisms generally used to, to store uh, large and massive uh, data by using nanotech uh currently we are using uh, silicon semiconductor chips sir it is uh, okay. quite efficient and cost effective also uh, because it is um uh, easily available in the sands of our land uh, so that might be better better choice to for the integrated circuit industry mm -hmm. because the smaller in size it becomes as you said no the yeah, yeah, yeah. issues that uh, pop up yeah. uh, if if we induce this plant smaller in and a... smaller ah uh. sorry sir come again no no i you please continue ah okay sir you are telling if something we, no if we do you are telling if uh. we, okay sir if we induce our nanoparticles in the production of silicon chips we might get smaller chip instead of the large one so we might oh. uh, save several space in the compartment of the gadgets also okay so how will this nanotech act for um, robotics uh, we can store millions of micron in 4.5 metrics of um, 4.5 nanometer chip itself sir okay we now we need a storage uh, device which is a uh, physical or a cloud one but in uh, a small uh -huh. small piece of uh, nano particle chip it may get stored of millions of uh, storage can be uh, infused in that sir okay fine okay thank you mani yes yeah, sir thank you Good afternoon sir I am Shakti Velan BSc Computer Science B section from Anna Violet Fashion Science College and my topic is connecting world in metaverse syntax abstract in our life times day to day we are using social medias to communicate to everyone but we, we are not seeing visual to communicate to anyone but the metaverse will providing to see which world world reality so we cannot um, so we can see virtual world in real life and nowadays the social medias are depend on metaverse the use of the use of statistical methods to combine the result of independent empirical research studies meta analysis has a long history meta analysis work and what can be divided into two traditions test of the statistical scient scientifications of combined result or method for the combining estimate crossing these studies introduction Uh, metaverse will be being to given rich to given experience of the
prosper in nature near <laughs> near future if you are company owners you have to prune it tunnel run your company online meta analysis meta analysis can be understood as an uh, form of uh, server form of search research in the research report that people will uh, or survive but how how do you research select renewable research skills uh, another way of the each steps of meta analysis of uh, from problems format through the statistical uh, analysis and the inter interpretations of research advantage of data make makes use of all information finding are transforms to transform to communicate uh, functions expressions of its effect magnitude the major purpose are are to increase and number of observation and statistical power improve the estimate of the effect size of the uh, innovation or association this advantage of meta meta analysis many this discourage lay uh, defines trials a good meta analysis uh, badly badly designed studies will still result in the bad structure representation meta whatsapp instagram messenger facebook conclusion meta analysis and superiors to narrative reports for systematic review of the literature but it quantitative result should be interpreted with the carriers even when the analysis is performed according to the egon rules reference thank you so thank you sir okay um shakti will uh, okay fine i have a question couple of questions sir is the metaverse and meta are uh, same i say what sorry sir uh, metaverse and meta the terms uh, metaverse and meta are they same or different uh, same only sir same. they are they so are who owns the uh, facebook uh, sir facebook was uh, hello okay uh, yeah yeah who owns the metaverse facebook would change its name to be meta and go its uh, all in building a futures version sir it's called the meta okay okay fine the summary of the sister okay that's all from my side um if there are no more questions then we can invite the next uh, presenter okay thank you sir thank you for this opportunity sir sir meanwhile we would like to just run the post presentation sir it's just a one minute presentation for your list fine ma'am okay okay all right ma'am we can rush it off Uh, yes
Students, kindly be ready to present your poster. First, uh, Srimati and Abhineshwari, third place in Good afternoon, sir. I am Srimadhi from Annai Wallet Arts and Science College, 3rd BSc Max. Now, my topic is Graph Theory Applications. First, we will see what is Graph Theory. Graph Theory is nothing but vertexes and edges connected. Next is graph theories, which are used various place. Transportation, cricket, weather, trans weather reporting, and social network. For example, we take one of the above field, Google Map. Google Map are represented various locations or vertexes, and uh, roads are represented edges. So the graph theory used find a shortest distance between two nodes. Thank you, sir. Please proceed with the next poster. Good afternoon to all. My name is Jagdish, first BACCF, B section, unavoided arts and college. Today's my topic is artificial intelligent robotic. Artificial intelligent AI provides robots with computer version and motion control to better understand the employment and act. Accelerator. Accelerator are the devices that are responsible for moving and controlling a system of machine. Power supply. Power supply it is an electric device that supply electric power up to an electric loads. Electric motors that are that are the device that conduct electrical energy into mechanical energy. Muscle wire. Muscle wire that, that are made up of the nickel tin called called are the very thin in the shape of sensor. Sensor are the device or machines which helps to delete the events or change in the environment and send data to the computer processor. The devices are usually equipped with other electronic devices. Thank you. Next poster is presented by Mohammed Ajmal Khan, Mohammed Arif, first BSCSE. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Muhammad Abdul Khan, Department of Basic Computer Science Section, First Year Annevel Thoughts and Science College. I am honored to be here present today. My post presentation on modern data science. Modern data scientist. Data scientist is a study to data extract meaningful insights for business. It is a multidisciplinary approach to combine the principles and the practice from the fields of mathematics, statistics, artificial intelligence, computer engineering to analyze a large amount of data. Core basic knowledge of modern computer science. Communication and solution, domain and software and software. Thank you, Ajman. Thank you. Next to post Thank you. 
Software testing. Software testing is the method of assessing the functionality of software program. There are many different types of software testing, but the two main categories are dynamic testing and static testing. Software testing is method of assessing the functionality of software program. There are many different types of software testing, but two main categories are dynamic testing and static testing. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, functional testing, acceptance testing, smoke sensing, regression testing. And uh, use the acceptance testing unit testing. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. I am Shakti Priya Darshini of first year BCA B section. My topic is about Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers are denoted by F and Fibonacci sequence is the sum of the two preceding numbers. The simplest sequence in Fibonacci series is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. Here, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, 2 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, and so on. This is the Fibonacci sequence. This is the simplest sequence in Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci Venaka numbers are denoted by Fn, and Fn, Fn plus 1, Fn plus 2 is the general sequence. Good morning to all and all present here. Myself, Gayatri, I am first MSc Computer Science in Anna Violet Arts and Science College. Now I am going to explain about that how mathematics is used in machine learning. It is necessary to understand the mathematical behind machine learning. Machine learning is all mathematics. Machine learning is built on mathematical prerequisites. The math helps you understand why some models are better than others. In this quiet chart, I mentioned some topics, linear algebra, probability, and statistic, calculus, algorithm, and others. Linear algebra. Linear algebra covers a significant part of mathematical concepts used as machine learning. It is a mathematical subdomain dealing with the linear system of equations and wave to are represented in vector space the through matrix. Probability and statistics. Probability is the study of the measure of uncertainty. There is need of equality. Uncertainty is the real world. As information we work, it is usually incomplete. This probability helps as model elements of uncertainty. For example, probability of user playing back a man loan based on fast transformation. Thank you.
गुड इवनिंग मैम लर्निंग रोबोटिक्स रोबोटिक मशीन मेड बाय ह्यूमन बीइंग यूजिंग साइंस इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी रिप्लिकेबल ह्यूमन एक्शन एंड एक्सेस टू देम जोमेट्री इज अ पार्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स दैट इज साइज शेप पोजीशन एंगल डायमेंशन इन रोबोट्स आर मेड मेड अप ऑफ व्हील्स रिक्वायर्ड बाय कांसेप्ट ऑफ सर्कल एरिया एंड पैरामीटर ए रोबोट्स वर्क इट्स वर्क इट्स बे अराउंड a room it is used to using sensor and whether they on uh, whether they on the sony coordinating light or in which the sensor turn their measure, measurement of the of bold in, into number and uses of mathematics thank you next discussion about the mnc mb Thank you, Brinda. Next, PT Shweta first BCA. Good morning to one and all present here. Today, my topic is about the virtualization. Virtualization. So, virtualization is nothing but it's a computer basic. a uh, computer general environment which is seen an object that appear to be a real making the user feel they are immersed in a surrounding we all know that we are is being used for the gaming and but i'm pretty sure that we are is going to shape our future in so many ways more than gaming like education healthcare to real estate also recruitment and also construction building industry etc and the invention of vr invention is vr invented by jaron lane is he is an american computer scientist and also a virtual artist writer and a composer of a classical music he was born in he was born in 3rd may of 1916 in united states and if you ask me about the trend in the vr vr virtualization the trend is being applicable to the technology which is applied in the computer based various industry it can also help in healthcare and education and also in entertainment tourism and also business institution and if you ask me if still vr is growing the answer is yes about 70 million of people of worldwide spending on vr system and then vr is advantages we have advantages and disadvantages of vr and advantages is like help in providing training and it has very low risk and in also increase in increment and engagement towards the subject and its advantages like it is an addiction some people can be addicted and then take into one is impact on human body it can really uh, make our human body really uh, work and then it is not engaged in the real world it is all uh, it is all regarding as the virtualization and it is we are safety for it as it is really important that we are is very safe as long as they are using properly with a relevant safety control as an educator run company towards the company we want to make sure the children to safe physically and emotionally both online and offline thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am next 
thank you preeti and shweta next divya of second bcom af divya from second bcom af so now we are going to see our speed of operation research Good afternoon, one. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Divya from Second Bcom A and F. Now we are going to see about the history of Operation Research. So first we are going to see about First World War. The First World War is between the period of nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen. So it is one of the deadliest conflicts in history. Left millions of people dead and caused great loss to the military society. British scientists set up the first field installations of radars and observed air operations. Next, we are going to see about Second World War. It is between nineteen thirty-five to nineteen forty-five. Analysis by many scientists lead to improved and increased effectiveness of British fighters in Second World War. The success of Operation Research in military attract the attention of industry managers who are seeking solution to their complex problems. Nowadays, there are almost every organization has. Around the globe, India was one of the few countries who started using Operation Research in 1990. In the 21st century, Operation Research is already displayed in many academic institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Next, Surya, V of third BCA. Post delay from. Yes, sir. Speak. Parallel. Safety markets. First of all, never get out personal information such as phone number, address, school name, photo, and password. Second point: talk to your parent, teacher, or guardian if you feel uncomfortable with with you see on the internet. Third point: be polite and respectful of other online. Never send a mess. Never send a message to to you. Not easy face to face. Fourth point: Never meet your online friend alone. Make sure, sure, make sure you have air with your parent house. Press about it. Fifth one: When setting online, you see a nickname that will not allow reveal any time anything about you. Thank you for everyone. Thank, thanks for everyone. मैथमेटिक्स <laughs> Discrete mathematics is a branch of mathematics concerned with the study of objects that can be represented. It encompasses a wide array of topics that can be used to answer many tangible questions that arise in everyday life. Discrete mathematics provides an essential foundation for virtually every area of computer science, and its applications are corresponding to us. In discrete mathematics, there are five major concepts: logic, probability, indexing, regression, number theory, and graph theory. 
logic is the language used for most formal specification languages and is fundamental for understanding much of literature and verification in the programming language formulation and design. Probability is ubiquitous not only in computer science but also in other quantitative fields. Similarly, probability can be used to measure the reliability of the Induction and regression are key concepts in understanding the functional paradigm of program, which is seeing increased adoption in industry companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Oracle, Facebook, and Amazon. Number three as critical application across blockchain cryptography and computer security. Graphs are powerful data structures which are used to model relationship and answer queries. Computer scientists use graphs extensively to represent file system for version control and functional programming, deep learning databases, and many more applications. Finally, discrete mathematics constitute lingua franca for computer sciences and software developers. Thank you. And next, Amit Sharma and Rithik of second BCA. not available. Next, Lokesh and Karan of second VC. Hello, welcome all. I am Karan Singh. I am Lokesh. Uh, we are presenting the evolution of video games. First, the video game started in 90. First, the video game industry started with the 1972 gaming uh, gaming console with the 3,000, uh, 300,000 units sold. And in the 1970, 1977, the first cartridge introduced with the Atari 2016. And, uh, and in the 1983, the first Japanese company, Nintendo, introduced and Super Mario that uh, took over the world. And in 1989, the mobile gaming industry was in main mainstreamed. The Nintendo Game Boy took the world, uh, and the Tetris was the main thing at the stage. In nineteen in nineteen ninety four, the PlayStation hit the market and take the boom. In two thousand three, the avatar industry, avatar and uh, in game trades are made. In two thousand four, the world of Warcraft took the world and. Uh, took 12 million active playing subscribers and in 2010 the motion capture technology was introduced by xbox 360 and took the world and in 2001 the glass free 3d was introduced in nintendo 3ds thank you for the wonderful opportunity thank you Thank you, location current. And next, Navanit and Karishma of third, second BCA.
permission next mercy go mary of course msc mb Next, Ms. M. Kiran and M. Chandu of Second DSC Computer Science from Malay Valley Arts and Science College is going to present the paper Analysis of Services in Public Cloud Computing. Next, Mr. S. Vinod Kwame ready for the next paper presentation. Good afternoon to all. I am M. Kiran from Second. Good afternoon to all. I am M. Kiran from Second BSc Computer Science um, from Anivala Thompson Science College. My topic is my topic is analysis of service in public cloud computing. The aim of the project is analysis of service in public cloud. Computing in this paper presentation, I will explain about public cloud and the types of public cloud and the types of services and public cloud. Public yeah. introduction to com cloud computing. So, what is cloud computing? What is cloud computing? Simply put, cloud computing, often referred to as the cloud, is a service that allows people to use online services that are generally available to any device with an internet connection. The goal of cloud computing is to deliver this service over the internet in, in order to offer faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale. Server means cloud. Server saved from internet, saved from this, it is also cloud. First, before the days, data are saved from laptop, laptop to memory device, and pen drive. Nowadays, the photos and data are saved from Google Drives. These are all saved from uh, cloud technologies benefits of cloud cost first num number one cost effective no upfront base costs no need to uh, approaches and uh, manage uh, the infra infra so, scalability number two scalability increasing adding resources in existing server server number three elasticity ability to scale up on handle high volumes of traffic number four reliable service must be available when needed Types of 
types four types of cloud computing public it can be accessed anybody in the internet private particular organization only access hybrid public and private also access multi cloud it profession is the example of multi clouds what is public cloud using the public cloud expands the sharing and syncing capacities making it more accessible and the backup of data is much similar public uh, what is public cloud structured the public cloud as an architecture which is a multi tenant and it enables the user to share the resources of the computer next topic will is next topic is explained by my friend chandru over to chandru good afternoon to everyone let me see about the uh, service of the public cloud the first first service is source, software as a service the second service is pass platform as a service the third service is a iaas infrastructure as a service first let's see about the source it provides the distributed software hosted in the cloud users access this source through internet in the, uh, it avoid installations in every personal machines computer it avoid hardware requirement too next we see about the pass it usually is in an organizations no infrastructure are maintained in that pass provider provides a build and build and supports it provides what optimized environment to cloud trust connection next we are see about the, and finally we are see about the iaas it outsource the entire data center to cloud service providers the providers host everything from the storage service to network hardware it maintain the visualizations of environment next next we are see about the source pass and ias are where the companies are used in the, the this three through three sources source used in the end of user uh, anybody can use the source service pass is a software developer service and ias is a it field or net architects next we topic class cloud computing is private versus pri public versus hybrid hybrid private in the private cloud computing a single person or single organizations uses the cloud next we are see about the public cloud uh, in the public cloud computing two or more organizations using the same cloud and finally we see about the hybrid it is as combinations both private and public cloud computing next we are see about the public cloud security security providers are done by public cloud service providers it provide a specialized security and automate security functions to monitor the system it provide user data from the beginning access by other cloud tunnels to gain the access to additional level of security organization level and or hybrid environment so so we are so the cloud computing is uh, one of the storage area it reduces the mobile and mobile or system storage cloud computing is the online storage area lots of servers gather in the cloud is called a cloud computing thank you thank you for a given great opportunity to me and my friends thank you so much
Good morning to Onandal. Good morning to Onandal. I am Gayatri from First MSc Computer Science in Arnai Vela Tatsan Science College. My topic is the art of where cyber resilience. Abstract cyber resilience encapsulates a broad range of practices, tools, and concepts related closely those of information and operational technology security. Cyber resilience is distinctive in its inclusions of the efficient use of information technology tech adversaries use of the term cyber resilience as key challenge and the synonym for information security or IT security confuses customers and the security protectioners and the obscure critical difference between these disciplines. Synopsis, cyber resilience, need for cyber resilience, major security problems, virus and worms, hackers to prevent hacking, malware to stop malware, Trojan horse, password tracking. What is cyber resilience? The term cyber resilience is used to refer the security effort through online services to protect your online information. With an increasing amount of getting connected in internet, the security threat that cash must you arm to are increasing also. Need of cyber resilience. Cyber resilience is necessary since it helps in securing data from threats such as data thieves or misuse also software your system in virus. Major security problems. Virus, hackers, malware, trojan, hurts, password tracking. Virus and bombs. A virus is a program that is loaded onto your computer without your knowledge and runs against a cyber vicious solution. Install your security suite that protect the computer against a threat such as virus and bombs. Hackers. In common, a hacker is a person who breaks into computer usually by gaining access to administrative controls. Types of hackers. White hat hackers, gray hat hackers, black hat hackers. How to prevent hacking? It may be impossible to prevent computer hacking. However, effective security control, controls, including strong password, the use of firewall can help. Good morning, good afternoon, sir. Malware. The word malware comes from the term malicious software. Malware is any software that infects and damages a computer. Thanks for the word knowledge from sir. To stop malware, download an anti malware program. Also, else prevent infections. Activate net, network threat protocols, firewalls, antivirus, frozen authors. Frozen authors are email viruses that can duplicate themselves, steal information, or on the computer system. How to avoid frozen authors? Security suits such as avoiding frozen authors. Password tracking. Passwords attacks are attacks by hackers that are able to determine passwords and passwords to different protected protector electronic. Some passwords ever use the same password for two different sites. Thank you, Ms. Gayatri. Uh, next, Ms. Santosh, Mr. Ajay, and Ms. Jagannam, second BSCCS from Annevale Arts Science College, is going to present a paper on Neuron in the New Mind.
from Sajan DS. Good afternoon, sir. This is Sajan from Sajan DS Computer Science. I am here to present about neural link in human. Upstart. The aim of the project is parallelistic we can activate the neural activity by planting the chip. By planting the chip, the blind can see what is in front of him. Then also monitor the nerve condition. There are some drawbacks in available the neural. Introduction. Neuralink is a company founded by Elon Musk in 2016 with the aim of the developing technology that can create direct interface between human brain and computers. The company is working developing on BMI, brain machine interface, that would allow human interact with technology directly using their thoughts. The following topics are continued by Mr. Ajay. Good afternoon, sir. This is uh, Ajay. I am here to explain about the N1 sensor. The N1 sensor is developed by Neuralink company. The N1 chip allows an electronic neutral interface to work wirelessly inside a subject yet once implanted. The chip is not much bigger than a coin. Uh, comes with tiny wires and a circular design. It can also be charged wireless, wirelessly externally, which is quite necessary given the implant sits under your skin. The wires are equipped with 1024 electrodes, which are able to monitor, able to monitor brain activities and theoretically electrical stimulates in the brain. Implanting chip inside brain. The operation is done by a surgical robot. The surgical robot analyzes the current health of a patient. Surgical robot plays a known chip without disturbing nerves and neurons inside it. The following topics are uh, continued brace and post. <laughs> Benefits of a known chip by inserting the a known chip inside the brain can we can remove the unwanted memories from brain like traumatic or tragedy memories by inserting this chip inside the brain giving we can give vision to a blind also telepathy telepathy is the by telepathy we can share our thoughts without speaking to our uh, inserted patient or friend or either relations. <clears throat> Pictureization. We can pictureize what we see in our eyes to the our mobile devices or mobile phones, etc. By the chip, we can consider we can monitor our body condition currently on live mode. We can elim also eliminate the pain in our body. Drawback: There is a lack of lack of privacy. A person can hack the chip and uh, do whatever he wants. High risk of brain injury or infection when it's blast or happens. It's too expensive to install in our brain. It was difficult in repairing. If you want to repair, you have to surgery again. Human trial conclusion. Human trial starts within four months. Let's hope to lead a healthy yeah, and productive yeah, life yeah, yeah, yeah. in future with Neuralink. It's decreased the distance between humans and devices. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Jagan. Next, Mr. Ariel and Mr. Santosh, of first MSC CS, 
Verizon calls its millimeter wave. Good afternoon to one and all. My topic is about uh, Verizon calls. It's a uh, millimeter and wave. My name is uh, Elena Rasi from uh, First MSC series. We can see about um, Verizon calls. There, uh, there are uh, overall views. It is uh, abstract interaction, evolution of wireless technologies, 5G advanced features, intelligent network uh, automation, extended reality, Stepping stone towards uh, 60. Uh, steps. We can see that uh, the 5G evolution starts with release 18. It's called uh, 5G advanced. Guidance is provided on which features to extend in 5G advanced and how those features enhance and enrich the uh, already related to 5G networks. Interaction. The 5G networks have been employed in large parts of the world. 5G advanced also provides the stepping stones in the area that will influence the future 60 system and those are bridge VG with 60. These are the evolutions of the wireless technologies. We can see the 1G. It is belongs to 1980s and uh, it has an analog signal speed in 10 kb per second. It has a drawback. There are uh, poor voice quality, large uh, phone size and limited capacities. Uh, 2G wireless is improved in uh, 1991. It is found in Finland based on uh, GSM. Speed is uh, 64 kb per second. Services, text messages, um, picture messages, and MMS. Better quality and capacity. Uh, it has also uh, drawbacks of 2G. Network coverage issues, weak signals, enable to handle complex data videos. We can see the 3Gs. Introduced in 2000, speed is 144 kb per second to 2 mb per second. It has a smartphone uh, taglines, features faster communication, send receive large user, high speed web, TV streaming, 4G, high speed data access, combination of uh, combinations of uh, Wi Fi, speed up to 1 GB. It has a feature. Just more security, high speed, high capacity. It also has a drawbacks. Need a complicated hardware, and it is also expensive. Five G advanced features: intelligent network automation, network energy savings, reduced capacities, and NR devices. And I'm Santosh from uh, First MS Computer Science. I'm going to continue this intelligent uh, network automation. Automa AIML for RAN enhancements, AIML for physical layer enhancements, AIML in 5G, 5G4. Extended reality. The 5G boundary latency communication capabilities will enable a, large, a wide range of new applications, including extended reality, which refers to anything from virtual reality and augmented reality to mixed reality. Stepping stone towards 60. The increasing expectations set a clear target for those in the industry and research community. Community 60 should uh, contribute to an uh, efficient, uh, human-friendly, sustainable society through uh, through, through ever-present uh, intelligent communication. Conclusion: It is therefore important for 3G PPP uh, to focus on these areas as part of the 5G advanced work while service providers prepare to leverage uh, the benefits of 5G advanced systems. These technology components are also important precursors to several 6G building blocks. These are some of the references. Thank you.
you, Ms. Ariel and Santosh. Next, Rajiv and Riyas of 2nd BSCCS is going to present a paper on up dark web. Good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon to everyone all. Welcome. We are going to present the topic based on dark web. The past participants are Yandria Sahamat and RS Raju from Second DC Computer Science. Abstract. Introduction of dark web, different part of dark web. Using Tor access the dark web. Using Tor, what should I do? Usage of dark web in India. Cicada 3310. Conclusion. Are the upcoming abstract and topics. Okay, let's see. What is dark web? For this, we have to go to the past. From 1990s. In the beginning of the internet to the public as accessible, it grown so fast as quick, and with that, the dark web has evolved through it. All over the world wide, the child to every person, every single person in the world has gone access to it. But, however, more dangerous or illegal, further it has been gone. Exploring the hidden internet. As other websites, the dark web doesn't have easy access. The deep web or dark web, wherever it is, it is hard to access as a normal person cannot be access of it. Only the employees of it or the sites, persons can only handle it. What are the different parts of the internet? The deep web is the part of the internet which is generally hidden from the public view, as we have seen above. Then, the deep web is the not access through usual search engines, Google searches, the Tor, the Tor, the onion router. It is the way of the getting into the dark web as unknown and unauthorized sites in the internet. Overall, there are 2.5 million people are using Tor to access that. So why do people use Tor to access the dark web? Let us see. To access hidden services, a hidden service is one where no one be the user, but also the website itself has their anonymity protected by Tor. This means that the IP address of the site cannot be identified as hiding information about its host, location, or content as IP address. For that, to get the details, it is not through the users. For buying using the bitcoins or the online as illegal contact with the nearly in 2014, there were 60 percent of the hidden services were used for weapons, drugs, and stolen goods, etc. 
multi layer security these are the parts of the layers as the securities concepts encrypted traffic ip masking block trackers blocks fingerprinting bin your history accessing the dark web you may see the logo to the right on your desktop or placed in the folder somewhere in your computer also you can see that your child accessing a new browser which is not used to you but used often what is this new to you as look thought often uses mozilla firefox for as browsers using thought what should we have to do and what is use the sense of perspective in many ways the young people use as both community sites environments may access pornography in this and images of children or sites selling drugs and weapons or other goods it is important to have open conversation with your child to help them develop safer behaviors online as well as with exchange strangers rest the rest of the topics will be continued through rs raju of second dccs good afternoon one and all hey rajiv i am going to continue sir vipri presentation the respect their desire for privacy the many young peoples are considered with politics matters such as internet privacy and security there are many alternative you could explore such as use of vpn virtual private network as a potential mean of providing the additional layer of security to their online activities in addition encouraging young people to use private privacy filter on social media thing criticizing about what they share online and control who is their friends and contact list is good way to help them maintain their online profile is discreet usage of dark web in india india has been biggest marketplace of dark web user as compared to australia south america india makes up 26 percentage of all the countries using dark web according to zt net hacking group hacking group known shiny hunters to to sell the data 73 million users on dark web it's breached this security of the of ten organization including online dating app zucos and social share etc found out the around 70.16 percent of user per mail using dark web and compare only 29.4 percent female using the dark web cicada 3301 unknown organization tons of rumors involving the involvement of mean some believe it's discreet agents or uh, for government or even terrorist activity is up to, uh, appear only four times uh, posting the complex puzzles to be solved latest on january 5 2016 conclusion the deep web contain valuable resources that not easily accessible by when searching engine, uh, engines but greatly available to enlightening search it's make um, constitution the resource missing in the surface web thank you
I would like to invite Mrs. S. Mahalakshmi at Department of Computer Application to deliver the summary of yesterday's today's session. Thank you, Aradi. Yes, shall I start? Thank you, Aradi. I, Mrs. S. Mahalakshmi, Head Department of Computer Applications, is indeed highly privileged to reveal on the summarized version of this two days virtual national conference 2023 on future blend of mathematics and information technology. Before giving an insight of this conference, I would like to quote on conference stating that growth is never by merry chance. It is the result of forces working together. Yes, the groups of this conference are the use of digital technologies in various fields of mathematics and information technology. A highly informative and brainstorming talk was delivered by the three eminent speakers of the three sessions, respectively. In session one, the speaker was Dr. T. Nandakumar, Nandagopal, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Sri Ramakrishna Mission, Vidyalaya, College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. He gave a summary on introduction to fractional differential equations. In this session, students from mathematics department, they have presented the paper presentation on math lab, cryptography, fuzzy logic, applications of operation research, LPP in e-commerce, Lamy's theorem, how Karigolan used mathematics to build a dam, and mathematics in computer science. So all different spheres of mathematics uh, these details or discussions were shared in this session. And in session two, the speaker was Dr. R. Tirumalai Chelvi, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Computer Science, Government Arts College for Men, Nandanam, Chennai. Gave a list of this on learning to build a smart foundation using NLP, Natural Language Processing. In this session, a technical session on computer science from other colleges presented various topics such as review on face emotion based music recommendation system, virtual switch based on augmented reality and gesture, image caption and interpretation system, and automated question paper generator. These are the papers presented by students or from various colleges. And then from in-house, our students presented the presentation on from Department of Computer Applications. The topics or the titles shared over years in session two was dark web, cloud computing, cloud gaming services, metaverse, accident deduction, and alert system using Android applications, Internet of Things, social impacts of so artificial intelligence. Then genetic algorithms in data mining. In session three, today's morning session, in session three, the speaker, Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, Assistant Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Engineering and Technology, Christ, deemed to be a university in Bangalore, he gave a brief discussion on blockchain computing. In this session, students from various colleges participated and presented the papers on the following topics on an automated remuneration, 
prediction of movie success using sentiment analysis of tweets building recipe recommendation phishing website deductions and from department of computer science asked students presented their paper presentation on digital immoral immortality immersive technology hacking organ on a chip infusion on nanotechnology new spices with thought and emotion unlocking the potential of auto means in machine language neuro link in human these are the paper presentation this is carried out in this session 3 at the end i want to say we hope these two days virtual conference on technical sessions were highly informative and interactive students actively participated in the technical as well as poster presentation on these conference title for paper presentation and poster presentation and cleared their doubts and queries thank you thank you mrs mahalakshmi ma'am i invite a vice principal mrs zafia solman ma'am to deliver the valid key address dear esteemed guests colleagues and attendees a very good afternoon to all on the zoom platform and to all participating via the live platform at the outset i would like to congratulate and appreciate the department of mathematics computer science and computer application for organizing this two day virtual national conference on the topic a future blend of mathematics and information technology it is an honor to address this esteemed gathering of mathematicians and computer uh, scientists from across the nation today we come together to celebrate the remarkable achievements and advancements that have been made in these fields in recent times from the far re uh, reaches of pure mathematical theory to the cutting edge innovations of computer science our collective knowledge and expertise have propelled us forward in ways that were once unthinkable as we gather here today it is important to reflect on the role that mathematics and computer science play in our world these fields are the foundation of countless technologies and applications that have transformed our lives from the devices we use to communicate with one another to the algorithms that power our financial system yet even as we celebrate these achievements we must also recognize the challenges that we face mathematics and computer science are vast and complex fields and there is always more to learn and discover we must remain dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and the advancement of these fields constantly pushing the boundaries of what is possible one area in which we must continue to focus our efforts is the the de de uh, democratization of technology as computers become more powerful and software more sophisticated it is increasingly important that these tools be made accessible to everyone we must strive to ensure that the benefits of technology are not limited to a privileged few but are instead available to all the future of mathematics and information technology is undoubtedly bright these two fields have already made significant advancements and their integration has led to a range of new applications and possibilities looking forward we can expect to see even more exciting developments as these two fields continue to blend and work together one area where the combination of mathematics and information technology is likely to have a significant impact is in the field of artificial intelligence that is ai 
machine learning algorithms rely heavily on mathematical concepts such as linear al uh, algebra, calculus, and probability theory to identify patterns and make predictions. As these algorithms become more sophisticated, we can expect to see all applications that are capable of even more complex tasks. Another area of great importance is the ethical implication of our work. We develop new technologies and algorithms. We must be mindful of the impact they make on society as the whole. We must ask ourselves difficult questions about the unintended consequences of our work and take responsibility for addressing these issues. In closing, I want to express my deep gratitude to all of the mathematicians and computer scientists here today. Your tireless efforts and dedication to your craft are an inspiration to us all. I urge you to continue pushing the boundaries of what is possible, always striving for greater knowledge and innovation. By doing so, we can help create a brighter future for all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zofia Solomon, ma'am. Now, I invite Mr. Sam Bain, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Application, to announce the rewards and awards of the National Conference. Good evening, everyone. It is time to uh, announce the best performers in the uh, National Conference. And uh, in the session one, Mr. D. Manigandan of first MSc Computer Science of Anai Violet College, who presented a paper in the evaluation of Max and MATLAB, uh, is, uh, is the best performer of session one. And in session two, Ms. E. R. T of uh, MSc CSNT from WCC College. Uh, she uh, presented a paper on the review on uh, face emotion based music recommendation system, uh, which is uh, considered the best paper of session two. And in session three, um, Darshini K uh, KM from uh, WCC, uh, she pr presented a paper on the topic uh, predicting the success of movies using social media data, which is the best paper in the session three. And from, uh, uh, and uh, poster presentation, uh, modern data scientist, uh, which was uh, the best of the uh, papers. Okay. And in session two, actually, the paper was guided by Dr. V. Sh uh, Savitri Ma'am from WCC College. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam Bell, sir. Next, I would like to invite Mrs. Gladys Tankar Rubin, ma'am, head PG Department of Computer Science, to deliver the vote of thanks. <laughs> I consider this as a wonderful privilege to share the word of thanks on behalf of our Annevalet Autism College. First of all, I thank God, the Almighty, for making this two days conference a successful and fruitful. I express my sincere gratitude to our founder president, Savalier Dr. N. R. Dhanabalan, sir, Secretary Mr. N. R. D. Premkumar, sir, and Joint Secretary Dr. P. E. R. Premson, sir, for encouraging us to conduct this national conference in our campus. And I must acknowledge the incomparable contribution of our dear principal, Dr. Sinita Labana Nebansima, Vice Principal, and IPSC coordinator, Mrs. Dr. Solomon Ma'am, for this successful meeting. Therefore, I extend my gratitude from the bottom of my heart, their wonderful leadership in this regard. Indeed, I thank our resource person of these two days conference, Dr. Uh, Nanda Kobal, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, SRKMB College of Arts and Science, Pandur. Dr. Arthirmali Selvi, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of Com Computer Science. Government Arts College, Nandana, 
and Dr. R. Ganesh Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Christ University, Bangalore, who have enriched our thoughts and minds with full of insights. Without them, our national conference has no value at all. Once again, I express my sincere gratitude to the respected resource persons. I need to thank the convener of the conference, Mrs. B. Mohanavalli, Head Department of Mathematics, co-convener, Mrs. S. Mahalashmi, Head Department of Computer Applications, and heads of all departments and faculty members of mathematics, computer applications, and computer science for their immense cooperation and moral support to conduct this conference successfully. I render my special thanks to the technical team, Mr. Abhilash, librarian, Mr. Ponnarasa, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Mr. Samuel, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Application, for their immense support for this virtual conference. Also, I thank our department students to, who have contributed their abilities in various aspects throughout this conference. Once again, I thank each and every one of you for your valuable participation to make this event in a successful manner. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Mrs. Gladys Tankar Bhima, National Anthem. I request everyone to pay attention for National Anthem. Janakana Mana Adinayaka Jayahe Bharata Bhagya Vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkada Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhitaranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 Ja